I don't know why I ask. It is 545. My name is Danny, Danny Bonaducci, like Bond, James Bond, only with Danny and Bonaducci. And this, it's, <laughs> otherwise, almost yeah, entirely otherwise, like to, that. Totally, totally different. But aside from that, it's the same. Uh, let's see if I want to say Okay. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Day. Yeah. What? What? So that's what you do for your money on a radio show. <laughs> that's that's the stuff that we sell. Cause it gave me a lot to make that sound. <laughs> um, I forgot what I was saying when I heard Humpty. You said good morning. I did. Well, we got we got to start from there. Uh, Oh no, I said uh, I said I don't even know why I ask. Yeah, and because I know the outcome. So it's not who's right, Amy or Danny. Amy's right. Here's the thing: how wrong am I? It did not seem. I don't know. Like the the fuss uh, didn't seem worth the thing. And I'll tell you the thing. And you can go, hey, you were wrong, and I know that. But how wrong was I okay. is the game we are playing. <laughs> so uh, I barbecued some uh, Korean short ribs last night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got them from a butcher. There's a butcher at the end of the street uh, yeah. in my neighborhood, Queen Anne. I've mm-hmm. uh, been in there a hundred times and never bought anything. Because I think they're for, you know, who'd just buy a steak from, from a butcher? You oh, why not go to the butcher? You yeah. say, yeah, just for one yeah. steak. It seems like a thing to me. I go to Safeway. Right now I would go to Met Market, which seems like it would be very good. But we bought these... Uh, cheap you know they're not the best cuts of meat they're all they're, what holds them together is bones and fat kind of like me at a certain portion of my life um so anyway i go and i i i get them and they're all sauced up and ready to go right and they're all whatever kind of sauce i'm gonna go korean barbecue sauce yum so yeah totally yum. yes i have some with me right here if you want a bite or two oh, you're, yeah. you're welcome to it um because i bought he said uh, he, he said about three quarters of a pound would be right for one person so i said okay give me a pound and a half he was high. When he smo- <laughs> when he smokes meat, he's smoking more than meat, if you know what I'm saying. How so? The way too much or not Way enough? too much. Oh, way, way too much, but good call. Thank you. Um, but that was the problem. I'll eat, I think this is the restaurant I brought him to work. It's all yummy. So Amy puts them on a plate, which I take out to the barbecue, which is or the grill. Yeah. Which, although it's barbecued meat. Anyway, stop bothering me with your <laughs> rules, Paul. I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, I take it out there. I cook it fast, man. I'm scared because... It's also got got a lot of folds in it, you know, where um, it's a strand of, of, of boned meat, yeah. if you will. You know what it looks like? Sure. Of course you do. So it's the rack. Uh, yeah. It's the entire thing. They're not they're not split up yet. No, no. I don't I would never who yeah, no. <laughs> um but because it's soft and fatty, it wraps around itself. And I can't untangle it. I don't want to touch it all that much. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? it's so it's not really... lying flat on your grill. No, it's twisted up. So yeah. I think when I unfold it, it's going to be raw in the middle. I know it is. And I'm only going to cook it for uh, 90 seconds on both sides, which didn't work out at all. It was a fantasy, my friend. Uh, <laughs> I flipped the back of it, but I got them to what I think is perfect. I put them back on the plate, and I take them into the, the house, and I say, okay, dinner's ready. Let's eat. Do you see it? I do, and you're wrong. I know. You're very wrong. <laughs> but you are how so wrong? very you are so wrong. You should get your grill master award taken away from you. Well, I don't know how I'll live without it. <laughs> but all right. Uh what's wrong and why? You use the same plate. Right. For That's raw it. meat and not raw meat. Yeah, can't do that. Right. Okay. I agree. That was a mistake. <laughs> Here's the reaction. I'm not eating that. To which, by the way, I called her Sarah. I don't know why. <laughs> you don't need meat any given day. But she was being a lot of work. So I called her Sarah. Uh and uh so I said, listen. I'm not going to go out and get more stuff to eat. If you want to go get more stuff to eat, you can get more stuff to eat. There's stuff in the in the fridge. There's stuff in the cupboard. There's stuff, man. We can do that. Yeah. And she looked like she was going to start doing. As a matter of fact, she was in the pantry. Um, but it's a reasonably sized pantry. She's not, you know, underdressed in there. And I said, "Are you really going to do this? I do it my whole life. I'm 58. I never." Switch plates with chicken, with shrimp, with butt faces like you. That didn't give me any points. But I said, I know you're right. And okay, I even the said chicken's this. pretty bad. Though. I said, no, I lick a raw chicken. What do I care? Bring me some raw chicken. I'll make chicken sushi. And like the, the next day, you you're like, why do I feel so gross? Why am I so sick? Except that this is the next day. <laughs> yeah. She gets to be sick if she wants, but she's not because if I say I've done this a hundred times, that would be an understatement by hundreds of times. I've never... Uh, except when married to somebody, which is a lot of my day, uh, they they insist that because I I know I'm wrong. I just don't think about it, especially when I'm cooking for just me. Throw right back in the ball, and get a little more sauce on it. It'll be all be good. So here's here's where so we all know that Amy's right, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Would you have then said, 
I am not eating that and stuck by it. I probably would have asked you to put it back on the grill to cook oh. it. Oh, that's a good call. Yeah, that's yeah. a great call that was not made in my house. <laughs> and it seems like Amy would make a call like that. And then give you the fresh plate. She's going to have to give you two plates from now on. Or bowls? Oh, no, she normally does. This was, a, this was a mistake. That's why I said I know I'm wrong. I just would not have. It seemed to me that she was going to stand by, I'm not eating that. And that's what was going to happen to our dinner. That we got it to butcher. We put it in my backpack because we didn't even know what we were going to buy on our walk outside. But if it's heavy, I need the backpack. And it was heavy. It was a pound and a half of ribs <laughs> and a sprinkler system. But I digress. So luckily at the end, because I was starting to get mad. And even though that she's right she was never going to lead, uh, reach the level of my anger over this. I was, I was dangerously wow. close to mad. Like, so what happened? And mad in my house is not like a normal thing. We're too because I never mad. We never fight. Life is yummy. Everything's good. She's in charge. I don't know where our banking system is. That's how much I trust her and love her. I could be poor <laughs> yeah. and not even know it. Um, but this was where I was going to tell her how wasteful she was. And, you know, we're not made of money. We can't. It's not. Ra- oh, my God. Korean short ribs don't grow on trees. <laughs> Said it with a straight face, man. I, it's, it's fairly horrifying. So anyway, she uh, acquiesced to the fact that we were going to eat dinner. We paid for it. And uh, nobody nobody is sick. But I, I knew I was wrong. But I wondered if you go, nah, you're a little wrong. Nobody ever. I know. I don't know. Do you know one person that did that and got sick? Personally, uh, no, and you're not chicken wrong. I think there's a scale. Oh, okay. And you're not chicken wrong. You know what's horrifying is that you've said something kind of nice about me, and I'm going to go, yeah, she Paul's right. <laughs> I'm I'm not chicken wrong. Right. I'm I'm not scampy wrong. <laughs> I wonder if that's going to stick. What chicken wrong? You're not like that's yeah, not chicken. Like you're wrong, wrong but you're not chicken I, wrong. I, I kind of would have thought so until we put a spotlight on it. <laughs> it's not like. Uh, Hose off. Yeah, that's kind of this natural thing to happen. Try saying uh, chicken wrong. Chicken wrong. No, that's not, stupid. No, but I mean, like, so say Tori tells us it's going to be 30 degrees today. Oh, Tori, that's a mistake. That's not chicken wrong. I don't know. It's going to be 80-something. That's chicken wrong. It's totally Tori, chicken that wrong. That totally Weather's chicken, chicken wrong. wrong. All right, now that we put it that way, I think it has some legs. Chicken legs. Chicken legs. <laughs> which are not chicken wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's no go tips, but... <laughs> well, I still is. like it. But yeah. go tips just kind of happened. Yeah. We've now put a spotlight on chicken roll. Right. Somebody do something wrong real quick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> whoa. Oh, that's terrible. That but it's not chicken roll. It's not chicken roll. Yeah, okay. I like wrong. it. <laughs> I, 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 I have a question speaking of that, that same sort of wrongness. Yeah. We got an angry text yesterday. And they we, yesterday we were talking about the World Cup. And Derek told us what the scores were. Oh, yeah. We talked about the game that had happened on Monday. So yesterday was Tuesday. Yeah. And we talked about what had happened in yesterday's games, right. yeah, Monday games. Yeah. We got an angry text saying, Yeah, it's a full 24, alert. 26 hours later. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me hear the proposition. What's the matter? What's the angry thing? Oh, they said, thanks. I was going to watch that Belgium game. I guess not now. Well, it's 26 hours later. So My p- my point exactly p- all the time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You can't. And this one, that's you, by the way. It's getting spoken <laughs> to like a child. This one. Uh, what are you, like uh, three years into not watching Breaking Bad or whatever it is? <laughs> Spoil the end of that oh, show. That's been God. almost a decade. So, you know, but the guy's wrong. He's not chicken wrong. <laughs> but he is sadly mistaken. <laughs> News is brought to you by Car Pros Rent and Kia. A 26 year old homeless man was held on bail yesterday, $75,000 after police say he assaulted a father and a daughter walking to the movies. This is a family who was walking down Lenora Street towards Cinerama in Belltown when a man approached them acting erratic and aggressive. When the man started following them, the female yelled at him and said, uh, a separate female says, leave them alone. Oh, a different, not not even with them. Yep. And she pulled out what is being described as an expandable baton after the homeless man produced a knife. Okay, before this story goes any further, I would like to tell you this. Those fold-out batons are awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're, They're not awesome if they get taken away from you. Same with guns, same with everything. Yep. So the suspect disarmed her and shook her. Then the male intervenes. He gets hit in the head with the baton. Then police arrive at the scene. The uh, homeless person has fled at this point. They're able to track him down. The cop said 
he said to the police, what's in your sink? And that he was completely dis- uh, delusional. All right. They took him into custody. They said he has a documented history of mental illness and uh, he is homeless. The third homeless man arrested in five weeks for allegedly attacking strangers. Wow, that is. You know what? Um, people, I feel, are just getting on board the actual really seriously aggressive homeless problem we have. Yeah. You know, our problem, you know, I don't like the campers. I don't. I don't like the filth. I don't like the trash. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people, especially in the fine city of Seattle, don't care. The, the, I don't know why they don't care. They should care. But now the people I'm saying, they're camping and there's needles and there's this and there's knives. And I'm starting to be shown to be accurate information. People seem to be getting violent all of a sudden, grabbing children at the store and things like that. I think finally somebody might address this. Yeah, I wonder if it's that there that there's suddenly a rise in violence, or if it's because there's so much news about homelessness in our city yep. that they you know identify the person as as homeless. I think I think the latter. Yeah. Uh, because what is happening is I think the news kind of have an agenda too, and if it bleeds, it leads. Right. The homeless situation was not leading anymore. Nobody cared that much anymore. Now they're grabbing people in the street with weapons and now people are caring about them and things are about to happen because before this i never heard anybody identified as a homeowner you know uh, a homeowner attacks somebody in you know ballard today yeah. so now all of a sudden because homelessness is such a big issue that's what they're leading with but they're also shedding light on the fact that these homeless people are not just people down on their luck right it, it does uh, make you aware that Something needs to be done that isn't providing but I never thought more affordable that. housing. I never thought these guys in the tents are just people down on their luck because there's facilities. Do. I know a lot of people do, believe me. I mean, people talk to me. Um, but the fact of the matter is there is facilities available. There is a bed available. And if you live in a tent right under the Space Needle with 22 of your buddies, you're not just down on your luck. You're a crazy person that needs medical attention. We're getting some more information about that Walmart attack in Tumwater. According to authorities, an uh, individual named Danner Barton was a quick thinker. He's the one who was able to escape the carjacking attempt and got a bullet wound to his hand. He said, oh, I, okay, okay. He said, I ducked my head and I gunned it as the culprit opened fire in Tumwater, leaving a bullet lodged in his steering wheel. He is 16 years old. I was saying, looked like a kid. He did. And yes, we are now finding out he is. He's 16 years old. He says he is super thankful that a bystander eventually put an end to the violence that was happening at and outside this Walmart. The bystanders who we're learning some information about. He has not been identified by name, but turns out he is a 47 year old volunteer firefighter from Oakland. Sorry, Oakville, Washington, who's a pastor. So he is a pastor and volunteer firefighter who shot and killed the attacker. Super weird. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I don't know where in the commandments, thou shalt not kill lies. I don't think it's the first. <laughs> it's not. It should be. It's not. I think it's like the fourth or sixth or something crazy like that. But for a pastor to uh, to do that, and I, I, I think he can reconcile with that. You know, thou shalt not also let somebody else get killed, right, especially yeah. a kid when you can help. A lot of witnesses saying that this pastor administered first aid to another serious, uh, seriously wounded driver, and he is being hailed a hero. Very good. Starbucks announced yesterday it plans to close 150 underperforming stores next year, uh, next fiscal year. The company said they plan to triple their traditional annual average, but they will be closing these underperforming stores. Now, you remember about two years ago, Starbucks closed all 379 Tivana locations because those were not showing Because they were stupid. Yeah. Just thought I'd Not make my opinion known on that. To drink that much tea in America. I I got roped into going in there one time when you're at University Village. Yeah. Um, they always have people giving away tea and say, how would you like some warm lemon or whatever it is that <laughs> day? And we always have it. And then we feel like we have to go in. And then she bought right in front of me a little jar of tea for $40. Oh, my oh, God. Wow. That's that. That's I've crazy. taken their samples a ton of times and just never bought anything. No, that's why I was I was leaning that way. Right, yeah. yeah she went right $40. in and spent 40 bucks. Yeah. Uh, bad news for those of you who drive through the Battery Street Tunnel. The Alaskan Way Viaduct and Battery Street Tunnel will be closed for three weeks before opening of the new Highway 99 Tunnel this fall. That will force north and south traffic onto alternate routes throughout downtown Seattle. 
This closure will be from the Battery Street Tunnel to South Spokane Street, and that's because they need to realign Highway 99 from the viaduct to the tunnel. So in layman's terms, that means traffic is going to be hell's bad. Yeah. Yeah. And they said they don't have an exact date yet. But fall. The new tunnel by will be fall. driving on by fall. Uh, yes. They're saying that they'll they'll close that in fall and then three weeks later, which means six weeks later, they <laughs> plan to open up the tunnel. But that's still fall, right? Um, they're saying more end of the year, winter time. Okay, probably. I still got money against that. Yeah, me too. And I'd like to see it. I'm very excited about those tunnels, but right. I, don't, I don't see it. They're also saying to plan your alternate routes now, which why should I be that far ahead of schedule <laughs> when you're not. like four years behind? As I said, they haven't given a date yet, but my understanding is the plan is to open the new tunnel this fall, which means at some point, potentially over the summer, when traffic is already hell's a bed. So if they're going to close it for three weeks, they said it really depends on how long it takes them to get the new tunnel ready. So like Paul said, could be six weeks. Anybody got 50 trillion Zimbabwe in dollars that wants to bet they do? that Keep no that. i'm not betting <laughs> for it although the tunnel i mean i've only seen you know the beginning of it the opening of it but it looked into it a, a week or right. so ago the problem with it is, uh the, the one that bertha did yeah, right it's a big circle there's no lanes you'd be driving on the walls well i would probably be the only one in <laughs> but there they got but i mean they got to put some lanes in there yeah yeah the work they said uh, is proceeding very well on the new two mile tunnel the tunnel itself is the largest double-deck highway tunnel of its kind in the country. The tunnel will have two lanes in each direction, plus an eight-foot safety shoulder and no mid-tunnel exits or entrances. They said it will not be told when it opens, but the tolling will start next year. This all sounds confusing and weird. Yeah, and no mid-tunnel exits or entrances. Nope. There's not going to be any... Off ramps? There's not. There's no way you to get. You can't. Out. Nope. To like bore another tunnel. And then to up. Off. You got to go up too. Yeah. So what is? What do everyone who wants to get off downtown do? Go all the way through and circle back. No. <laughs> <laughs> take other roads. Apparently. Or take another road. Uh. Yeah. Uh, when it yeah, comes but if to you want to, if you want to drive to downtown, though, it's a cool little tunnel that'll get you there. No, I think it goes through downtown. It comes so up by the stadium. You would avoid downtown. It's yeah, a okay. two-mile-long tunnel. Right. So where is it starting and stopping? Is it starting at, at South Dearborn Street? Because then it will it, bypass It does start the right there at the stadiums. Yeah. And then I, where does it end? Uh, by uh, Harrison Street or yeah, John Street. Yeah, bypasses the entire city. Oh, yeah. I don't understand it You'd anymore. You'd be on surface <laughs> streets if you were going. I think you're not expected to be going downtown. You're right. expected to be going yeah. home to the suburbs or some right. such thing. You're either going Soto or you're going... Up higher on 99. Yeah, just 99 right now has five options yep. to, to get off or on in that same stretch of road. Yep. When it comes to traffic this morning, Derek will continue to keep you posted on how your commute is shaping up. Recreational marijuana use will soon be legal in Canada after the Senate passed a historic bill yesterday. The vote was 52-29. Canada is only the second country in the world and the first G7 nation to have legal nationwide marijuana. What's the first? Uruguay. Really? Yep. I would not have bet that, although I think I saw a news story on it. It was something to do with smugglers going through with guns and being dangerous. They said, hey, we changed our mind. You can have all the pot you want. I think they, they were having problems with the cartels. They're also a very forward-thinking country. Uruguay, believe it or not, Uruguay and Paraguay. And uh, they legalized it years ago, uh, 2013. And did they, le they legalize like all drugs, right? In Uruguay, I think there's a, a you can do cocaine, heroin. How much for have, uh, an eight ball? They may have decriminalized it, but okay. it is not legal. Yeah, that makes sense. There's no place where it's legal. I think Derek looked this up, except maybe was it Norway or Sweden? Yeah, I would have gone to Sweden, but I'm not positive. One of those places, but no, that's most places. It's just decriminalized, yeah, okay. not legalized. But this is huge for Canada. Yeah. The way this is going to work is each. Uh, area has to figure it out for themselves. So there will not be a nationwide, like, here's how you sell it. Here's right. how you grow it. Each province will have its own set of rules and regs, but it will be legal nationwide. Which this is the first time they have to actually care about it because before it wasn't legal, but they didn't care. Yep. You could go to Canada and smoke pot, buy yeah. pot. But now, like, we've seen here. Have you ever tried it? You ever tried buying pot in a place where it's not legal, especially where you're not comfortable or familiar? In Canada in particular, yeah. Just in general. It uh, just yeah. that seems it's a dice it seems dicey to me to go buy an illegal drug in a foreign country. I, but we've all done it. I know all of us have done it for <laughs> sure. Though though the time I did it, 
it would turn out to be oregano. I was in Jamaica. No, Until the other no, day. Dicey. Oh, yeah. Okay. I bought some in the in You've done it in the Caribbean. Absolutely. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Because I was going to say, up until uh, um, uh, not that long ago when all these pot stores started showing, I haven't brought pot in like 20 years, but yeah, I had on vacation in yeah. uh, somewhere in the Caribbean. A restaurant in Chengdu, China. Chengdon. <laughs> Serious Chengdon in this oh. case. Uh-oh. They offered an all-you-can-eat buffet, and things did not go well. They decided to offer a month of unlimited food for the low, low price of $25. For a whole month? Yes. They Whoa. thought they would get repeat business. They thought, like, yes, we're probably going to lose some money, but we can then get new people to come in. And it was an all-you-can-eat buffet. They lost $100,000 after two weeks of operations and closed down. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> oh, guys. I wish I had John Panette's uh, comedy bit. There's a 400-pound comic that has a thing about him getting that they, they see him walked into what he calls the Chinese buffet. <laughs> and they scream at him. It's super funny. Put the guy on the map as a comic. Two firefighters in Ohio have been suspended for allegedly making porn videos at the firehouse. Wow. Akron officials say Arthur Dean and Dean Eller, uh, sorry, Deanne, I guess is how you pronounce her name, a man and a woman, both placed on administrative leave. They were in a long-term relationship, but you're not supposed to do that. At no. Work. I'm on fire. Where's your hose? That kind of <laughs> you can't do that. You're a real-life firefighter. That was actual audio from yeah. that porn. Yeah. Nice we job, Danny. How many of these things have you written, 900. Danny? They all go the same way. <laughs> Australia called her the grand old lady of Perth and of the world. Guinness World Records knew her as the oldest known Sumatran orangutan on earth. And sadly, Puan has died at the age of 62. Oh, wow. Now, is that all sad or is that like saying, well, this lady that died was 125? It's not heartbreaking. She was super old. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how old orangutans. Orangutan. Yeah. Orangutan. Yeah, was, yeah. They usually don't they live cars, past 50. Yeah, well, that thing was old. This old lady made it to 62. She had 11 kids and 54 descendants scattered around the planet. They believe that uh, this grand old lady of the zoo is responsible for helping repopulate the planet with Sumatran orangutans. What a tramp. (laughs) My goodness. You know, I never really thought about it, but they kind of forced her into it. Yeah. Oh, the zoo in Australia, nothing but pimps. (laughs) Her genetics count for, they say, about 10%. Of the zoological population of orang- orangutans. Now I can't even say that right. I hate you. I think, isn't... <laughs> you said that part, right? Isn't the entire world related to Genghis Khan? I'm I'm a direct descendant. I think, I swear to God, <laughs> that, you know, he was doing his crazy horde thing. Yeah. And it comes out that, like, 3%, like, 100% of the world has 3% Genghis Khan running through him. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I have seen my, my breakdown of where my DNA comes from, and it is not Genghis Khan. No. No. Uh, wrong part of the world for me. Uh, well, but I'm 8% sub-Saharan African. These things happen. Yes, Where I Where are not. you? What are you from? Uh, I am from mostly Eastern Europe um, and far over, like, bordering Russia. That far Eastern Europe. I have no Asian whatsoever. All right. Unlike your wife. And I have no sub-Saharan African either. I'm my, and... my wife's like 7% Chinese. Aside from looking like it when she was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> At least five people were killed and a half a dozen injured after a fire broke out near a popular hotel in the Lucknow, India region. This fire terrible started. name. Yeah, really. <laughs> bad luck now. Right, that'd be good. And it sounds more foreign. Bad luck now. <laughs> yeah, the Is fire. Is that the accent they do? Oh. <laughs> people in bad luck now, India. Yeah, okay. bad luck now. It's exactly how they do it. Pretty sure that's. Not right. I'm pretty sure. Where are they? Where where is it? Bad luck now, India. And do you have any clips of anybody saying that? (laughs) If not, my I am the authority. Yeah. Uh huh. No, but you're right. He's not chicken wrong. No, he's not chicken wrong. Totally not chicken wrong. Bad luck now. (laughs) Now we're forced in a little bit. You might want to stop that one. (laughs) (laughs) Why does it sound like something to you? Uh huh. What? I think we should move on. The story's over. I feel like I've had bad luck now. I mean, bad luck now! (laughs) Authorities say somebody had been stealing American flags from veterans' graves in Massachusetts. There were flags at the Bellevue Cemetery in Adams, Massachusetts, and they were reported missing earlier in the month. Volunteers then replaced the flags by hand. 
but those went missing too. Wow. Police were called in to investigate and said, who the heck would do that to steal flags from a grave site for veterans? Yeah, I have my suspicions. Well, they decided to put up a couple of cameras and they found how much Chuck could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck woodchuck would. It was a woodchuck. It was woodchucks stealing all the flags. I was close. I had birds. I was going to go raccoon. Yeah, I mean, they're similar, but they found 75 flags in a little woodchuck hole. That this guy was, like, hanging out, snuggling with the flags, making a little nest with the flags. And they said a um, bunch of them were damaged. They were able to salvage some, but that I guess they feel pretty happy that it wasn't a, a human perpetrator. Yeah, because, you know, that just, although there's people certainly out there bad enough to have done it, but I, yeah. I guess it, it's kind of a warm fuzzy that it was not. Yeah. We go out to the Tahoma National Cemetery, which is a big uh, military veteran seminary, mm-hmm. cemetery around here. And there's always deer out there eating all the flowers. Yeah. So, like people oh. put flowers <laughs> out and then the deer come around and eat all the flowers. That's kind of cute. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but again, better than a human perpetrator. Absolutely. Right. Uh, you do hear stories about humans stealing flowers off graves. I've stolen flowers at hospitals. Oh, damn. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't seem to like give to somebody else? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I guess my mom, I, I don't even remember who. But it's not like I went into a sick person's bed and stole them. They're just in the hallway or something. Oh, okay. It, did, it was a, a spontaneous kind of thing. But my mom liked them. I'm pretty sure the guy who took them from was dead. <laughs> oh, it's time for today's Things Are Not Right in Florida, story of the day. Yay! A Florida woman is behind bars after she allegedly shot her estranged husband's, who's it, friends, during an argument about air conditioning. Kimberly, Boy, do I understand. <laughs> yeah. Kimberly Dunn's estranged husband and his brother went to her home in Lake City, Florida, to pick up an air conditioning unit. He wanted to sell it, and she said, a oh, hell no, it's hell hot. No. Yeah. So she sat on the air conditioning unit to prevent the men from taking it. She then attempted to fend him off with a stun gun, but then with her pink handgun, shot him in the testicles. What? Oh. What did you I was think all I involved with this story, and then that happened. <laughs> yeah. uh, she told police it was unintentional. She was only trying to scare him. We're not- well, that'll scare him. <laughs> yeah, it scares me, right. and I wasn't even there. We are not sure of his condition. He's hurting. That's his first <laughs> <He's> certain. <laughs> right. And she's being held without bond. No ifs, ands, or buts. He's hurting in his nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Florida. Oh, oh Florida. Florida. News this morning brought to you by Car Pros, Rent, and Kia. In music news, that is coming up next. A big announcement from Sir Paul McCartney. Yay. In entertainment, a certain Tom Hanks movie is heading back to theaters. And sports, what happened in New York with the Mariners yesterday? We will talk about that and give you a chance to win tickets to an upcoming Mariners game next in sports. Well, we are giving you a chance to win tickets to see the Foo Fighters at 7.20 this morning, performing at Safeco Field on September 1st. Yummy. Super excited for that. And I've got some other good music news for you. Paul McCartney has announced a new double A-side single and is teasing his upcoming new album. Now, he just turned 76 and hasn't released a studio album since 2013. And now he says new music is on the way. Two new songs. One is called I Don't Know. The other one is Come On To Me. And they will be a double A-side single. Now, is something a double A-side because somebody just decides, I like both these songs equally? Yeah, there is no B-side. Yeah, That's what it sounds like. It's like like. the 13th floor. Did Paul (laughs) McCartney just invent the 13th floor? I think think so. I think that's what happened. Yeah, Yeah, well, Sir McCartney can. Now, I'd play you a little sneak peek, but he has not revealed any of it. It will be out later today. And he said the new album is being worked on, but does not have a date for that. So we are hoping that arrives this fall. Sir Paul McCartney. Dr. Dre is working on a movie about the late singer Marvin Gaye. Dr. Dre has already cleared one major hurdle that has evaded all others before him. Interviewing his dad? Oh, he got rights from the family. Now... No one else who has tried to make these movies has gotten 
the music publishing rights to right. use Marvin Gaye's movies. So Cameron Crowe tried to do it, James Gandolfini, Scott Rudin, Jesse L. Martin, Lenny Kravitz. They've all tried to get a biopic made wow. of Marvin Gaye. None of it has been authorized by Marvin Gaye's family until now. You know what they should do is ask Robin Thick. He'll just give it to him. <laughs> Say, oh, you don't have to pay anybody for it. Here it is. Yeah. Dr. Dre does have, obviously, a lot of uh, music industry experience, but also big movies like Training Day, Car Wash, Straight Outta Compton. And so perhaps the family was like... Car Wash? Mm-hmm. Wow. So perhaps you're the man to do it. Uh, he, of course, was shot back in 1984 at the age of 44 by his um, impaired father. His father had, um, I think, Alzheimer's or dementia. And they got into an argument over television. Shot and killed him. Wow. 30 is a big number for many. Turning 30 is a big deal. And whether it's your birthday or it's just a movie. Are you um, going to celebrate? You celebrate. No, I meant you. When oh, you me. finally turn 30. Yeah. Uh, well, that's not for another couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> We're going backwards. Yeah, I thought it was next year. I thought year. it was next year. I even got you something. <laughs> Well, I know it's. I point, got you a T-shirt. This is me so horny. Don't you want that? <laughs> <laughs> At some point, you know, twenty-nine. I'll get bored of it. I'll yeah. move on to thirty, and then you can give me that great T-shirt. All right. The thirtieth anniversary of the movie Big is right around the corner, and it's going to return to theaters. The movie Big, starring of course Tom Hanks, will return to seven hundred theaters across the USA on July fifteenth and July eighteenth. It earned Tom Hanks his first Oscar nomination for Best Actor, and it's a great movie. Yeah, it's a great movie. I love it. And it would be fun to have a chance to go back to see it in theaters. Yeah. yeah like for I, see, for the first time. I, I don't know for the most part why I do that in a regular movie. I have done it for uh, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, so, so I actually have done it, but... It's going to be, you know, nobody's going to dress up in their underwear. Yeah, but to see it on that big screen, I mean, I guess more so with like an action movie versus yeah. big. But... Or people in their underwear. That's... Yeah, and maybe if you're taking people who have not seen it before, you know, they're going for their first time, taking your kid or whatever. Huh. Yeah, I mean, if you took Jelly Bean to see it on the big screen, it's just a more memorable experience and this you don't scene, have distractions. Right here, with, I think this guy's name is Robert Loja. Uh, I think the guy that he's dancing with. Yeah. That was an impressive scene. Oh, it was awesome. And how many times have you tried to recreate it? Million five hundred eighty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know the the problem now with the way we view television and movies, we're distracted constantly. Yeah. You're watching it on a small screen, uh, like your phone or an iPad. Maybe it's on your television, but then, you no, know, I'll check my email or I'll see what the Mariners score is. You know, to actually go to the movies is a way to actually consume the movie. Yeah. So, you know, Jelly Bean, I'm sure, would love Big. Yeah, experience oh. it rather than just watch it. Yeah. Well, what a poet you turned out to be. And you don't know you're right. to do that. No, you're absolutely right. Experience Big. Don't just watch it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you think I can get paid if they That's use Paul. that? I think they should <laughs> use it. The Star Trek TV universe is getting ready to expand. Star Trek Discovery's newly appointed showrunner has made a five-year deal with CBS Television Studios... That includes expanding the Star Trek fr franchise for TV. Now, they say it looks like they are working on getting Patrick Stewart back to reprise his role as Captain Picard. He's awesome. I don't know about the Picard thing. I think I've seen it once or twice. But on uh, uh, American Dad, he's brilliant, man. He's great. He, he's, I think he's like a sir or something, and he's doing fart jokes on a cartoon. It's amazing. <laughs> The show is uh, the show Star Trek Discovery is currently in production on season two. They say it will pick up where season one left off with the USS Discovery crew answering a distress call from the USS Enterprise. However, it is helmed by Christopher Pike, who commanded the ship before James T. Kirk. And Christopher Pike is the name of the character who will be played by Anson Mount, who is the guy from Hello! Wheels. All right. Beautiful hair. Oh, right. Okay, that guy. Yeah. I liked that guy in that show. Me too. Great hair. <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence has just landed a major beauty gig. She signed on with Dior in 2012 to be a brand ambassador, and now they are going to make a new fragrance, and she will be the face. Uh, well, this is a big deal because they have not made a new fragrance 
Dior in 20 years. Wow, that is a big deal. And I like her, although I was pretty mad at her for Sparrow. Yeah. What do you want to try and pull off a Russian accent for two full hours? So everybody in the audience goes, well, that was terrible. Oh, no, (laughs) no, that said a bit. Oh, that was kind of Chinese. I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, it bugged me. Do you know what's frustrating about that? And it was good, by the way. I'd like to point out her accent was good, but you can't be a Russian accent from a movie star you know for two hours. I read that book, and what frustrated me is that woman in the book is supposed to be the most beautiful woman in the world. Right. You're telling me that's Jennifer Lawrence? As much her as anybody else, I think. She's pretty. Yeah, okay, man, but who's the most beautiful woman in the world? There's a woman... Uh, French... Okay, who's who's somebody that we all know so we can vote? Yeah, I was gonna say there's a French actress named like Sophia something or other who is like sensual and beautiful and looks Russian. Jennifer Lawrence looks like she should be surfing in California, but she makes most of her money in space and stuff. So right, I, I think she's saying... a really good accent. I think the accent from anybody, from anybody that you know really well to try and do a right. Why don't you just because everybody gets away with doing British accents? So do that, right? <laughs> But why not Hello, hire... Governor, I'm a Russian spy. <laughs> yeah. Why not hire somebody who speaks Russian? Because they want to get people into the theater. Yes. That didn't She's work. She's a big name. No, it didn't work. The whole, that's, <laughs> but it didn't work exactly as the reason I'm saying. It was a stupid vehicle yeah. for her. The hosts of ABC's Live with Kelly and Ryan are now Guinness World Record holders. After an on-air experiment, hosts Kelly Ripa and Ryan Seacrest were joined this week by a teacher and author named Science Bob and he demonstrated an elephant's toothpaste, which is a chemical reaction that causes colorful foam to emerge from a tube due to the mixing of sodium iodide and hydrogen peroxide. Are there any elephants involved in this? There are not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was sure they brush an elephant's teeth. It's Ryan Seacrest on daytime TV. <laughs> of course they got to brush his teeth. The result on Live with Kelly and Ryan was hundreds of gallons of foam enough to to be certified by the Guinness Book of World Records. As what? The largest elephant toothpaste fountain. I don't know why they call it that. (laughs) Paula, is this something you've done with Jelly Bean? No, it's not. It's weird. It's like the uh, The volcano. volcano? Yeah, we've done that. Yeah, it's like that, only it has something to do with a chemical reaction that causes a colorful foam as opposed to the volcano that's sort of blight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, This was a fountain of hundreds of gallons measuring a whole lot of cubic feet and inches, and it's the world's largest elephant toothpaste fountain. Never even heard of another elephant toothpaste fountain. And there's no no elephant involved in this. I think this is all (laughs) bogus. You guys are so passe. I can't believe you don't know elephant toothpaste. It's made by that guy Tom, (laughs) right? Okay. Googling it. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. Look at that. Oh. It looks sort of like an elephant when it uh, does the chemical reaction. The more you know. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> he does, yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> Let's take a look at sports. 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 Sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys. If you're facing a DUI, call 1-800-DUIOA. That's 1-800-DUIOA. Yesterday, the Yankees welcomed the Mariners into town. I, I don't love your tone of voice. I don't yeah. think they felt very welcome. They did not feel very welcome. Domingo Herman pitched a two-hit ball game. The Yankees hit not one, not two, not three, four home runs. Yeah, they had plenty of offense. We should have tried that. You know, the game started well. The first inning, the Mariners scored. Like, whoa, they're gonna there roll. Go, right? yeah. It's gonna be awesome. And then, well, not so much. I saw there was a, a two-run home run from the Yankees. I think in the fifth inning that uh, a Mariners fan caught the home run ball and he was so angry. Like he catch <laughs> he catches the ball and people are cheering and then and he's but he's got his Mariners jersey and cap on and he's just like really mad and then they they pan back to him a couple of times at the next at bat and he's just sitting there like pouting. He's got a big frown on his face <laughs> I, holding his baseball. I don't know if it was just Philly, but certainly in Philly, you threw it back. Yeah, that's Every what stadium. I thought. You gotta throw it back. When yeah. you were telling that I thought, oh, oh he's gonna throw this ball back. I mean he didn't, he kept it. He was too far away. He's a traitor. It was a it was a well hit shot. He was too far away. He would have had to like thrown it to a Yankees fan to no, throw he back. just dump it over the fence with total disrespect. You don't no, try but, and get a good throw. No, he was far away from the fence. That, oh. The home run was that far back. He could have made back. it back yeah. onto the field. Wow. I didn't know they had that bad of seats. The, the look on his face was so priceless. Yeah. And I was thinking, what would I do in that situation? Would I look around for a Yankee fan who's a kid to give it to? 
Or would I just sit there and make angry face? <laughs> yeah, he was just, he, he took that route. Yeah. So up next, another 405 start time in New York against the Yankees. Felix Hernandez getting the start versus Jonathan Lausiga. And they're going to turn it around, Andy. Good. They turn should it just turn it around. Yeah, turn it around. So the Mariners on the road, uh, as I said, you can watch on uh, Root Sports with that 405 start time. But if you would like to win tickets to an upcoming home game, you can call in right now. We're going to play an in-studio version of Mariners KZOK Music Trivia. That's how it works. Okay, we're going to play you a song clip. Then you tell us the title, the artist, and the year it came out. And the first person to do so correctly wins tickets to an upcoming game. Derek, play the clip for us. All right, you know it. Call now, 800-252-1025. Artist, song title, and year it came out. Yikes. Uh, There was an incident at the San Francisco Giants yesterday where uh, one of the players did something that only a man does, in my opinion. Pee standing up? (laughs) A couple girls I know (laughs) can do that. Um, Hunter Strickland was so angry about blowing a save, he punched the wall and broke his finger. That is a dude thing. That's a total dude thing. You never see a girl doing that. (laughs) You were ready to fight me on it until you heard what it was. (laughs) No, no, there's a guy and girl things, and that's a guy thing. Yeah. Yep, he said that he was so angry, he punched a door, blown save. Uh, Manager Bruce Bocci told reporters that he's having surgery, and he said the closer has to have emotional control. We all get frustrated, but you can't do that. Who, Who said that? The coach, uh, the manager. And, and he's totally right. And there's no guarantee that his hand will be uh, the same. I've nope. broken probably what he broke, the third metal carpal, carpal, several times and had surgery on it once. And it's, you know, it's okay. But remember I told you I can't bowl or anything because oh, I can't yeah. guide the yeah. ball? Yeah. That's why. And LeBron did the same thing after the first game of the NBA Finals. Look how well that turned out for him. Uh, the, he fra- Yeah, they fractured Didn't? his hand. Wow. Yeah. And he can't uh, save have, have baseball saves anymore. Right, exactly. Or LeBron. They're not going to have him pitch anymore. <laughs> you know, he, he's such a good athlete. I bet he could play baseball. Oh, for sure he could. For sure. Yeah. Big, athletic. Could play yeah, football, could. could play baseball. Yeah. The World Cup has been underway, and a lot of these games have been very exciting. Uh, most of the games have been pretty close. But something else that they all seem to have in common, a lot of... Op- I have a guess. Go ahead. You get it in the wrong goal. You, yeah. s- you score it on Your yourself. Own goal. Yeah, right. the yeah. wrong goal. Now, it looks like the numbers so far, we have tied the record for own goals. Morocco, Australia, Nigeria, Poland, and Egypt all have scored own goals. And they said what's so sad about it, too, is that it's, um, it's the game. So it's not like you're up for nothing and right. then you score. Oh, they've own been goal. like the winning goal has been an own yep. goal. Now, is it usually well, the goalie gets it in accidentally or no? I mean, generally, it's a deflection off another defender. So like you're kicking it towards the goal and it just happens to bump off that guy and go. Right. And it's not like he kicked it in. That happens occasionally. He's trying to clear it out and right. he kicks the ball and it so goes in his own goal. But yeah. most of the times, it's a deflection off somebody. The the one yesterday, Russia wound up beating Egypt three to one. But the one. Uh, this one dude for Egypt scored an own goal, and you thought, oh my gosh, that's it. They're going to lose the game. They then scored a goal, but wound up losing 3-1, to one, so you kind of feel like a little better for him. Right. Yeah. They Sorry. didn't score enough goals. I was transfixed listening to Gloria in Spanish, I think. <laughs> I don't know what language that was. Also, Japan beat Colombia yesterday 2-1. to one. Senegal beat Poland 2-1. to one. That was a big wow. upset. Yeah. Controversial call where Senegal got a goal that they probably shouldn't have. Right now, we've got Portugal versus Morocco. Derek, where does that match stand? Portugal is winning the game 1-0 to with seconds left on the clock. Ooh. Uruguay and Saudi Arabia play at 8 o'clock this morning. Iran versus Spain is the 11 o'clock game. So the games have, uh, time-wise, it's the same. So it's 5A, 8A, 11A. So a lot of people watching at work, uh, which is probably not what they're supposed to be doing right. at work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It only lasts like a month, so we can watch it. We can watch it work. <laughs> Yesterday, the Las Vegas Aces beat the Seattle Storm ni- uh, eighty-nine to seventy-seven. Up mm. next, it's the Indiana Fever. Turn it around. Tip Coach off. Hips. Is it seven? <laughs> <laughs>
And we told you the Mariners are on the road playing the New York Yankees. 405 start time on Root Sports, but still giving you a chance to play KZOK Mariners music trivia. We play you a clip. You call in and tell us the artist title of year it came out to win tickets to an upcoming game. Let's hear that clip again, Derek. <laughs> Great song. Cliff in Tacoma. He knew that was a Steve Miller band. Yeah. He knew the song was Jet Airliner, but did he know the year? Well, yes, he did. Do the two of you know it? It would be weird if we were talking about him if he didn't know the year. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Cliff is not the winner. No, Let's go I, on. I, I don't have a computer over here. I never know what year. I I'm, guess. I'll go yeah. 79. Oh, yeah, that's a great guess. I'm Thank usually you. off by a decade, though, so I'll say 79, and it'll probably be really wrong. <laughs> Cliff was right. Y'all are wrong. You, you were close. 1977. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Same right. thing. Graduated high school. It is the hardest part of this game for sure, but Cliff in Tacoma is a genius, and he's going to the Jeep Winners window in our lobby to pick up tickets to what, Derek? Cliff won tickets for the game on June 30th at 710 versus the Kansas City Royals, which just happens to be turn ahead the clock night. Turn, turn ahead, ahead the, the clock, clock night. night. The future is back on Saturday, June 30th, when the Mariners turn ahead the clock versus the Royals on the 20th anniversary of the original event. The Mariners will don futuristic threads, and the first 20,000 fans will receive a futuristic Mariners cap courtesy of Alaska Airlines. Blast to Mariners.com for tickets. All right, next chance to win is tomorrow morning at this same time. And your sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys at 1-800-DUIOA. Yeah, we uh, have a lot of good radio coming up, but at 7.20 this morning, we got a game. It's called What the Foo? I like it. Uh, I always like them. Anyway, you can win tickets see the Foo Fighters at Safeco Field. There's a story making news about a kid in Canada who called 911 to complain about his parents. He said, 911, I have an emergency. Yeah. My parents are feeding me salad. Oh, I hate terrible. salad. <laughs> the kid's right. <laughs> You can't feed your kids salad. No, they should come arrest that out the parents. window. I remember <laughs> getting fed a lot of kind of what I thought was gross stuff as a kid. Sure. But you'd never call 911. No. I don't think we had that kind of awareness when we were kids that you could do that. Uh, no, plus my dad would kill you long before the cops <laughs> got there. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I remember my, my mom making liver and onions and the entire house smelled. We're like, what are you doing? This is disgusting. And she didn't make us eat it because she had a couple bites and realized it was pretty disgusting. Did she never have liver before or did I she ruin it? I don't think she had ever made liver and onions before. Oh, it's delicious. It's gross. I've never ordered it off a menu, though, and you'd be surprised where they serve it. I grew up, they served it at Denny's. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I would never order it off a menu, but I would make it myself, and it's always good. I remember thinking my parents were so mean and unreasonable when they'd say, go play outside. Like, what does that mean? Like, you just had to go amuse yourself outside. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, what are you talking about? Your parents never said, just go play outside? Yeah, Absolutely. Did. And normally they didn't say that because they didn't know where I was because no, I was playing outside. Normally your parents said, get in here and have something nutritious exactly, to eat. Yeah. And we thought, what terrible people. But sometimes, like, you'd go inside, you wanted a snack, or you were tired because you'd been outside all day, and they'd say, or you want to watch TV, and they'd say, go outside and play. I thought that was so unreasonable. Until you look back and realize, well, playing outside is like the best thing ever. Yeah. yeah. But when you were a kid, sometimes you wanted to watch TV. And the answer was no. Go play outside. It seemed unreasonable to me at the time. <laughs> it does seem unreasonable. It does seem the way you say it. It seems terrible. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't that. I'm sure your parents did something that when you look back... They made you do something you hated, and it's probably unreasonable. And uh, I don't know if it was, it seems unreasonable specifically to me. I think the other kids, or at least two of my, my other, uh, a brother and a sister benefited from this. But my dad one day insisted we all speak Italian. Oh. <laughs> oh. And the way we do it on the show where we go, hey, yeah, how are you? Uh, nice to see you. And that's that didn't like count? A great accent. That didn't count. You had to actually <laughs> say words in a foreign language. And we gathered around the table, and we weren't a friendly group of people. Bad stuff could happen when we gathered around a table, especially if dad no. showed up and said good morning or something in Italian and expected a, a response. Plus, I'm making a very comfortable living working 10 hours a day. Or why are you trying to get me to speak? I'm trying to learn my lines, man. You want me to learn Italian? So I yeah. thought that was unreasonable. And do, do your siblings speak Italian now? 
Si. Do they really? Because <laughs> si. then, like I said, it sometimes you look back and realize, well, maybe maybe it wasn't that no, unreasonable. Every, everybody in my family but me speaks Italian. Aww. Anthony, who was didn't care about the lessons, moved to Italy when he was 17 That's or 18. Cool. And yeah, wow. he didn't come home until he was fluent. Well, you guys listening, what did your parents make you do that you hated? And now you look back, was it reasonable or unreasonable? I have a feeling the kid who called 911 about salad will look back and think that was unreasonable. Yeah, but it'll be probably the best story that's going to happen to this kid. Oh, yeah. We'd like to hear your story. Call us now, 800-252-1025, or text your answer into 90627. So here's the deal, if you would like to get on board, and that is a kid called 911 on his parents for serving a uh, salad, which I kind of understand, but saying <laughs> you want to do it is one thing. Actually doing it, pretty ballsy kid. Uh, what did your parents do that you just hated? Here is our phone number, 1-800-252-1025, or text them on into 90627. Paul and Buckley, what did your parents make you do that you hated? Good morning, guys. Good morning, uh, Paul. We were just talking about getting outside well before i could go outside i had a laundry list of chores to do and if i needed money i'd better do them because oh, wow. that that was the only way i could get out to to do anything by the way paul I, I i agree with your parents now my parents didn't parent that way and i don't parent that way having said that i totally agree kid yeah. do your do your chores yeah uh, here's a laundry list including doing the laundry right and then you <laughs> i'll give you eight bucks or whatever and that you can go out so i think as much as I agree that I would hate that, I think it's a kind of normal thing yeah, on the parents. But we, we do look back and realize that some of these things our parents made us do were reasonable. I didn't really have a lot of chores. I don't remember really having chores. I think we had to mow the lawn, which I hated. Yeah. But looking back, it was a pretty reasonable request. Yeah, I had very lawn. few chores. Drama in Renton. What did your parents make you do that you hated? Hey, good morning, y'all. Morning. So... Unlike my brother, I ate everything on my plate for lunch or dinner or whatever, but my mother still made me eat onions, even though I refused to, but I ate everything else, and it was traumatic for me. I mean, the devil. Is it raw onions, cooked onions, any onions? Any onions. Yeah, that's uh, unreasonable. Which, which part? Making your kid eat onions when he was eating everything else? Yeah, I don't see. I don't see it as unreasonable. I yeah, I most think, parents. You most, gotta yeah, eat anything you gotta I clear put on your plate. plate. Yeah, yeah. I don't care if you like Brussels sprouts or not. You right. cannot leave this table till you eat those. That's, and you wonder why we have an overweight society. Your parents forcing you to <laughs> clean is, your plate. It is probably uh, not the greatest <laughs> yeah, idea. Actually, I don't wonder at all. It's probably directly related <laughs> to that. I'm just telling you, it seems normal. But certainly, drama needs to eat his vegetables. Yep. Especially onions, man. You're missing out. Yeah. No, he's not. And I would think, by the way, if you try some like uh, um, Sarah did not like the liver and onions. Uh, and didn't try it. Andrew Zimmern has a rule that I kind of like, and that is if you don't like it, try it twice. If you try it twice and you don't like it, that's fair enough. And I think that's a good idea. I think you need more liver. I, well, I've tried meat more than once, and I'm I'm fine not eating it. Denisha in North Bend, what did your parents make you do that you hated? Hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Um, well, we owned a grocery store, so there was no getting out of, like, especially Friday night, load night. Ugh. Oh. All this stock he had to put up, and it better be right. And anyway, but it's all good now. Growing up in family business is a very good thing. But when you're a kid, like you guys were saying, you wanted to go outside and play, and Denisha's being told, go work. Friday night and load night. Which, by the way, I consider every Friday night and load night, but that might just be me. (laughs) Uh, Kay, calling from Duval. Good morning. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Danny. Morning. Okay, so amongst my many chores that I had growing up, um, part of that was ironing, and my parents would make me iron the pillowcases and the sheets, and of course the crease down my dad's jeans, but the worst was I had to iron my dad's underwear. Okay, were you being punished? Do they not like you? <laughs> uh, who, under, who irons, irons underwear? underwear? Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, apparently, uh, everything was to have a crease. You know, the jeans had the crease down the middle, and his underwear needed to be just perfectly See, so I liked, pulled it out of the drawers. I like the crease down the leg of my jeans. At a certain era, that was cool. Or at a certain age, whatever it was. But the under the ironing the underwear just seems unreasonable yeah. to me. Yeah, there's something weird going on there. Well, I don't know about that. Like it's a punishment. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. yeah, it's not normal. It's not normal. No, it's full on not normal. We're talking about what your parents made you do that you hated. Sometimes you look back and they were reasonable. Sometimes they were unreasonable. Richard in Seattle, what did your parents make you do? Good morning. 
Morning. Um, they made me brush my teeth, and I did, when I was a kid, I hated it. But I like to state now that I'm obsessed about brushing my teeth. So, but I, I couldn't stand it when I was a kid. I didn't want to ever brush my teeth. <laughs> How many times a day you brush your teeth? Uh, probably about five or six now. See, I, oh, when wow. you said obsessed, yeah, I don't think it's good. Well, I'm against you. It's, <laughs> it's supposed to be after every meal, so maybe he's eating five small meals a day. Five, yeah. Which is, by the way, what people are recommending these days, mm-hmm. five small meals a day, to man- certainly to manage your weight and cholesterol. But I think that he's got to be losing some enamel. But as a kid, I know so many people that hated that. Your parents making you brush your teeth. Like, why do I have to brush my teeth? Because you're gross. God, I was such a gross kid, too. (laughs) David Cassidy used to call me the dirty, greasy little pizza. And everybody thinks it was, like, endearing. It wasn't. I was filthy. I was a filthy child. (laughs) Rob in Louisville, what did your parents make you do that you hated? Well, I was born and raised in Port Townsend, Washington, and they made me get a paper route delivering newspapers for the Seattle Times. I'll tell you what, Sundays was brutal because they were so big. That's right, so that's heavy. like an eight-pound paper. And what, were you on your bicycle? Yes, I was, so, and it sucked. And on your bicycle and tossing with that, yeah. you know, yeah. the ferocity. And you know that old man Smithers needs it on his porch, <laughs> or whatever that guy's name is. <laughs> Thanks for the call, Rob. Jeff in Port uh, Orchard, what did your parents make you do that you hated? They made me go to midnight mass on Christmas Eve. Yeah, me too, man. <laughs> that yeah. was pure torture. Do you remember where you went? Well, Catholic Church. We went for about half the years that I went, because I wasn't there that long, to the Hollywood Bowl. Oh. They had midnight oh, wow. mass at the Jeez Hollywood Louise. Bowl. And it was pretty fantastic, even though when I was a kid and they took me, it was horrible. When I took my kid, it was horrible for him, right. but I yeah. enjoyed it. I like midnight people... mass just because you got to stay up. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I didn't hate it as much. as I just Catholic church is so dull, yeah. man. My whole family's involved in it one way or another, and it's just deadly boring. For a lot of people, though, midnight mass meant packing into a hot church, you know, because it's cold outside for people that live anywhere bef- but... Uh, uh, Los Angeles. It's a tiny little church. It's packed full of people and you have to stand and it's hot and you're miserable and you have to wear your best clothes. And everyone's there because it's the two times a year that yeah. everybody, everybody goes, goes to church. church. Yeah. What's the other one? Easter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I loved Palm Sunday. That was always my favorite because you got to bring a palm your home. Fam- I would have bet big money that your family did it were not church goers. Remember, I used to go by myself. I was an altar boy. I was weird. That's right. And it was Man. Episcopal you, Church. Yes, you were weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, certainly not now. No, I used to like going to church, and I got to sit in, like, the bishop chair, all that, like, fancy chair. I love going to church. I have that chair at my house, and it's a friend. <laughs> but I love going to church, but not the, not the you know, the, a lot of incest and just incense and chanting. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, five, hi. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a crazy church that man went to. Yeah. <laughs> Incense. Oh! oh! I didn't get it completely. I get it now. Hey. Yeah, anyways, when I grew up, all my friends were out having fun, and my parents were never around, so I had to kind of raise my four siblings. I was the oldest. Yeah, that's no fun. <laughs> that is no fun. Yeah, I was young because I didn't have to raise anybody until I got to my kids. And man, what a big job that is raising kids. You oh, think yeah. I got it? You teach them right from wrong. You make them go to school. Uh, you tell them uh, you go to college and then get a career going. And it is not that easy. Uh, my great- brothers hated that. Oh yeah. Yeah, having to take care of me because I was the youngest, and six years is a huge age difference. He was wanting to go to high school parties and drink beer, and he had to stay home and take care of me, and I was ah. a brat. Did he still drink beer, though, while he was trying to take care? I did. <laughs> uh, a text into 90627. This is a great one. At the age of 16, my mom insisted on me breaking up with my girlfriend at the time because she didn't like her. Now I'm happy she did because that girl's uh, serving a life term in prison. Oh, wow. Yeah, that should be a topic one day. When were you positive your parents were wrong? Yeah. And it turned out they were totally <laughs> right. <laughs> Chuck and Robin Seattle says he his parents made him mow the lawn with a push mower. Brent in Port Townsend said mom washed his mouth out with soap. Yeah. Been there. That was no fun. Oh, I'm incensed. John <laughs> Tacoma, <laughs> they made him take baths and showers that he hated. Ray in Port Orchard said his parents made him kiss grandma. Yeah, gross. Uh, grandma my grandma had a mole. Smelled like mothballs. Yeah. <laughs> Tori, did your parents make you do something that you hated? 
My mom made me get a haircut when I was really little, and she insisted that she do it. And oh my God, she cut my bangs like halfway down my forehead. (laughs) I was crying for about three hours. Oh, that's rough. Awful. Yeah, mom made me get a perm once. Same thing. I think I cried for three days, though. (laughs) Paul, what did your parents make you do that you hated? How did nobody say naps? I hated naps. Jellybean hates naps. Now, I, as an adult, I would kill for a nap. Yeah. <laughs> when your parents used to say, oh, you need to go take a nap. Change your attitude. Go take a nap. Yeah. And you, you thought that was the worst thing in the world. It's true. Now it's like, oh, give me a nap. Remember, please. like, preschool and kindergarten, you had nap to that. Derek, what did your parents make you do that you hated? My dad was my Little League baseball coach, and he made me pitch for a game, and I was just so angry because I hated pitching and then he put me out there anyway and I walked I think 11 batters in a row <laughs> oh. and like my team got mad at me like it was my fault that I suck I'm like I know I suck I told him not to make me pitch right now if I hold a baseball I have like post-traumatic stress disorder <laughs> I understand oh. completely can you catch <laughs> oh yeah sure I, can. I knew you could do one of them <laughs> <laughs> I think it is time to play what the food what the foo? You can win tickets to see the Foo Fighters September 1st at Safeco Field. If you want to play, call us right now at 800 252 1025. Be at Safeco Field September 1st, and all week long, we are giving you tickets to the show. This is how it works you will have to correctly identify the phrase, term, or expression that contains the word foo. Susie in Normandy Park is our contestant. Hi, yes, Susie. Good morning. Morning. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? I think so. And do you understand the rules of the game? I think so. Then here we go, Suze. This foo is a term referring to the skilled use of a search engine, specifically Google, to quickly find useful information on the internet. It's a tongue-in-cheek reference to someone who has the ability to answer life's most important questions like... What is Antonio Banderas' net worth (laughs) with zen-like prowess? I don't have it, but some folks do. Can you tell us what the foo? Uh, I have no clue. Oh, you got, well, you know, you have a clue. I just gave it to you. (laughs) (laughs) You don't have an answer. answer. I'm bumming. I wanted to give it to little Susie. Let's see if Brian in University Place, uh, Brian, do you need to hear the uh, clue again or do you know the answer? Uh, yeah, if I can hear it again. Here we go. This foo is a term referring to the skilled use of a search engine, specifically Google, to quickly find useful information on the internet. It's a tongue-in-cheek reference to someone's ability to answer life's most important questions like, what is Antonio Banderas' net worth with zen-like prowess? I don't have it, but some folks do. Can you tell us? What the foo? Oh, oh my God. Um... Google Foo. There Google you Foo go, is absolutely Brian. good. Yeah. Congratulations, Hi, Brian. Brian. You Congratulations. are going to the Jeep Winners window in our lobby to pick up your tickets to Foo Fighters with the Joy Formidable September 1st at Safeco Field. The rest of you can join us again tomorrow for an ex- exciting round of What the Foo. And up next, the big news of the day. This traffic report is... Well, that is me, and that is that. And it is brought to you by Goldberg Jones, Divorce for Men. Call 1-800-DIVORCE, or you can go online to goldbergjones.com. Forbes magazine, they have their annual ranking of the world's billionaires. And... Well, is everybody on the list a billionaire? There's no hundred millionaires. No. Oh man, got to be real rich these days to be rich. Yeah, you do. And some of the rich are getting much richer. In fact, they are richer than ever. And just months after besting Bill Gates on the annual ranking of the world's billionaires, Jeff Bezos has now increased his wealth and the gap between the two by a lot of money. According to Forbes, Jeff Bezos's net worth. One hundred and forty one billion dollars. What? When he was listed uh, back in March, when they came out with the list, he was at one hundred and twelve billion dollars. Right. And that was like the first time any broke the hundred billion. I mean, countries don't have a hundred billion dollars. Uruguay doesn't have a hundred billion (laughs) dollars. In three months, 
His net worth has gone from 112 to 141 billion dollars. I guess that's what happens when you don't give it all away, like right. those other goody two shoes. Goody two shoes. <laughs> Make water. Who can't do that? Yeah. Turn a tap, Bill. <laughs> Back in March, Bill Gates's net worth was 90 billion. He is now at 92.5 billion. Oh, a little slower growth. I almost feel bad for the guy. Yeah. You know what's weird? In all sincere, sincere, yeah, because I mean it. Sincerity. Uh, <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, I do feel bad for him. Yeah. You know, no matter how rich you are, if somebody beats you at any, you know, Muhammad Ali, greatest fighter ever, and somebody beat him eventually, and I felt bad for him. Yeah. You know what I mean? These are titans. It was revealed last year that 64% of households in America are Amazon Prime subscribers. Wow. Wow. That is crazy. Conservative commentator Ann Coulter has doubled down on her theory that immigrant children that have been separated from her parent, their parents and in detention facilities are not what they appear to be. They're not what they appear to be. No, a lot of people have been talking about this. Very, It's a very, very controversial uh, subject matter. The mayor of Seattle, uh, Jenny Durkin, yep. is on her way to Texas this morning to meet with mayors from around the country. Good for her. To address this, uh, these uh, Im- illegal immigrants being separated from their children, being held at different facilities. Well, and Coulter says they're actors. No, she doesn't. Yeah, the children are crisis actors. What does that mean? Uh, that they that the Democrats put them out there to create crises and controversies. Are these the, like the same people that supposedly faked Sandy Hook? Yeah, so so similar conspiracy theory. You know what? I thought she was a funny clown most yeah. m- most of her career, but that that's outlandish because she knows a she does not believe that. Not for one moment does she believe that, and most other educated people believing conspiracy theories. Yeah, but she knows the damage that that will do. She warned President Donald Trump not to fall for it. Right. These so there's there's two versions of the of the conspiracy theory. One is they're just complete, you know, they're American kids that have been hired to be actors, or her slightly toned down, although not very much, that they're actually, you know, the children have been provided scripts. So here's what you should say. She also says in those the tapes that have been going around on the news. Why are these kids speaking English? Which they're not. They're speaking Spanish. No, every day I've heard they're speaking Spanish. They're crying out for their parents. I I don't know. Uh, uh, well, I I know more Mexican kids than any other uh, South American kids or Central American kids. So I will tell you this: of the handful that I know, I don't know any that don't speak English. Why would she be shocked? The people preparing to come t- talk to their mom and dad. Right. Those guys are. You know, it's harder to educate an adult, but these kids, of course, they speak English. This but that- is her quote. Yes, I think they need to improve their scripts. They're saying mommy and daddy. Maybe you want to put it in Spanish next time. She but they're not, though. They're saying mommy and poppy, which are a lot of these kids coming from Honduras and Guatemala. Yep. That's what they call their parents. Yep. Yeah. She says that uh, if you don't want to be separated from your children, you should stay in Mexico. Well, that, you know, that's an argument can be made for that. I don't agree with it, but just, you know, I was talking to somebody last night. And I said, uh, I was just mentioning, re mentioning this, Paul, this morning. I said, an argument can be made for both sides of it. And the person I was talking went, no, no, it can't. And I said, yeah, it can. Um, and one would be that. That argument is valid. It's not, you don't have the right to pull a kid away from his mother and father because it's right. But if they'd have stayed wherever it is they're born and not crossed and not broken any American laws, they'd still be with their children. Having said that, it's disgraceful that we take this, separate them. Another day, another story about plain sex. Plain like boring sex, sex? Not plain sex. Which, plain. Is, what are you talking about? One is the kind I have. <laughs> well, and one is the which... kind most guys I know married more than 10 years. <laughs> airplane. Airplane sex. Yeah, nothing plain about that. Nope. That's just... Well, imagine if you were sitting there in the second to last row. I have imagined this, by the way. You look up and see a couple having full-fledged adult oh, relations. not that. I, I imagined it from a different viewpoint. Yeah, entirely. <laughs> uh, this has been filmed. My mom and dad uh, were just trying to have a peaceful trip to Mexico when they sent me this. And they, mom and dad, filmed this couple just legit having adult relations on the seat. Are oh, people sh- are people on drugs that make you ridiculously horny? Because I <laughs> fancy myself at one point or another throughout my years as being, especially when I was a much younger man, excessively horny. And I would never have sex in a public place with people already watching 
without at least their permission. So, I mean, if you're going to get involved in something weird. But who would just do that? What's yeah. wrong? I think they're dangerous. Be I think discreet. they should be separated from their families. <laughs> uh, this they is def- certainly should be separated from each other. Yeah. This what? is definitely a not safe for work Those. clip. And, uh, it has been viewed about 4 million times. The video? Yes. Now, is that illegal for somebody to video them without their... Permission no. and knowledge and posted on the uh, internet of them having sex? I don't nope, think absolutely so. not. No, they're there. Because it's public. Because public they're in place. Public, no, yeah. you didn't have to take any extra. And here's the rule on it you didn't have to take any extraordinary measures to get the videotape. You yeah. didn't have to leave, in this case, your seat. Crazy. Or hers. The airline says they are investigating. No, oh, I bet they are. But oh, well, let's watch it again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we gotta we gotta take a closer look at this. Put your tray table up. Mine's up. That's not all. This up. <laughs> A Virginia elementary school will forego its original name, which represents a late Confederate general, and instead honor the first black president of the United States. Richmond's public school board voted to change the name of J.E.B. Stewart Elementary, which was named after James Ewell Brown Stewart, who was a Confederate general during the Civil War. Uh, A lot of people... Nom- nominated names that they thought could replace it. Schooly McSchoolface? Yep. Was that on there? No. Oh. <laughs> they had a bunch of different names which are significant to the area. Barbara Johns, Henry Marsh, Oliver Hill, and Barack Obama. And in the end, the one with the most votes was not Schooly McSchoolface. It was Barack Obama Elementary School. Good, because people can be silly. Uh, you know, a lot of things are named Schooly McSchoolface and things like that. Yeah. Because people think they're wacky. In my opinion, that's how Jesse Ventura got to be governor. <laughs> this will be funny. They'll never win. And then you have a crazy yeah. person running a, a state. Yeah, sometimes that happens in politics. Yes, it does. You think it's going to be funny, and then yeah. all of a sudden it isn't. <laughs> a big celebration at a zoo in Miami. A 10-year-old male Somali wild ass has fathered a brand new ass. This is a 46-pound healthy wild ass. Uh, the mom's name is Stella. <laughs> it's a nice ass. Uh, it's this, a- there's so many. I, I just can't. I don't know where it will end. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Now, it is pretty cute. I saw pictures of this, and it's pretty adorable. The Somali wild ass is currently the world's most endangered ass, with less than 1,000 believed to exist in the wild. It's really beautiful, smooth, gray coat, striped legs. They are close to zebras. And they said, this is a, a big deal, a really adorable little ass. Yeah, it's a lovely ass. <laughs> you can see this cute little ass at KZOK.com. Well, nice. that, oh, thank so everybody cute. for that. I think we're going to replay that audio <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to say that again, Tori? No. <laughs> I'll take that as a no. The big news of the day is brought to you by Goldberg Jones. Divorce for men, 1-800-DIVORCE or online at GoldbergJones.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is more coming right up. It's Jelly Bean's Joke of the Week. And now, Jelly Bean's Joke of the Week. Hey, Uncle Danny. Hey, sweetheart. You ready for my joke now? Yes, I am. Okay. What is the tallest building in the whole wide world? All right, I, I'll bite. What is the tallest building in the whole wide world? The library, because it has so many stories. Ha ha ha. Get it? No, stories? Yeah. Of course. Oh. You tell somebody a story. I like it a whole lot. <laughs> So, speaking of iHeartRadio stations, want one? That is a thing you couldn't have said just a few years ago. But I'm not kidding. You can have one with the iHeartRadio app. Uh, it's a listen on your smart, smart speakers. Just say, Alexa, play KZOK on iHeartRadio, and she will. Or, OK, Google, play KZOK on iHeartRadio, and you'll get you some music. We've had several stories in the news about couples getting busted for having adult relations in public. Yeah. Just a few moments ago, we were talking about a couple on an airplane who just felt the urge. They just had the impulse and got busy on the airplane in their seats. They didn't go into the Wow, bathroom. they did it in the seats? Right there on the seats. They were in the mood. And the last uh, was yesterday, I think, the, uh, the last time we talked about it was a couple who were out for a walk and then decided just have it right there next to the side of the road. Yeah, yeah it seems weird. 
I get doing something on impulse, but that's not one of the things I feel the impulse to do. I'm not positive that is a standard impulse. I think that is a fetish. And let's go somewhere as quick as we can, have sex where we shouldn't do it. I think that's the thing that's exciting to them. Well, this one couple has been busted several times, but the people on the airplane, they were in the last row. Maybe they thought nobody would notice. Yeah, I don't know. Weird. I'm a member of the Half Mile Club from when I was a much younger man. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Does that mean you were a half mile up or you... Never mind. <laughs> I, bet you, I bet you know the answer to that, Paul. <laughs> but I, I think a lot of us have done something on a whim or on an impulse. And I bet for both me and Tori, one of the things is it's your hair. We wind up like, Hey, I'm just going to cut my hair off. And then all of a sudden you have six and eight inches less. I know hard for you guys to imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got a, I have a bad one. What's that? I get tattoos. Oh, on oh a whim yeah. And an impulse. Now I have some that, that matter to me. Not many. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'll, I'll just be walking around. There's a tattoo bar and I'll think, oh, this will be fun. What would be good? I love you. Uh, the, the Rolling Stones lips or, or mouth like Tori has. But I have half a dozen tattoos that I don't even remember oh, why wow. I got them. I'm pretty sure when you got your giant back piece of Seattle, that might have been on a whim. It was totally on a whim. It was completely <laughs> on a whim. Well, you guys listening, do you ever do something on a whim or on an impulse? What was it? Something big? Like a back piece? <laughs> Call us now, 800-252-1025, or text your answer in to 90627 now. All right, so here's the thing. Uh, a couple keeps getting busted for having adult relations in public, but it seems to be going on all over the country, even the world. Did you ever do something on a whim or an impulse? Here's our phone number to call and call in, you will. 1-800-252-1025, or you can text us at 90627. Let's start with Paul in Monroe. Hey, Paul. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's all good. What do you got for us? Uh, this is back in the uh, early days of Internet debt internet and uh also before you really needed all the uh, the uh major paperwork to go across the border up to canada right so uh this is like january february uh, so it's it's still snowing out there uh in missouri and i drove from missouri up to canada up by detroit and to meet this girl and got up there had some fun started to come back and uh the security guard or the border guard there was not going to let me back in because I didn't have uh, my birth certificate with me. Really? Oh. Yeah. He's like, I should make you stay here, but you're from Missouri and I hear they have really good barbecue. So and I'm like, dude, if you let me back home, I, you come to St. Louis, I'll buy you all the barbecue you want. <laughs> and he's, like, he's like, all right, but next time have your paperwork. I'm like, all right. All no right problem, so can, no can, problem. I, can I help but, you out here, Paul? And that is, have you? Because this is a good one. You just need to condense it a little yeah. bit. Hey, man, you ever done anything on a whim? Yeah, I went from Missouri to Canada by myself in a car to meet a girl I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. there's your story, buddy. <laughs> went wow, to another country. Yeah, another country. And <laughs> yeah. by the way, excellent, excellent story on a whim story. Mine. Oh, I was going to not say who Dominic was, and now it's too late. My nephew. <laughs> it certainly is. Remember Tinder? Mm -hmm. Is that even still a thing? Yeah, I think yeah. so. My nephew on a Tinder date. Went to Nepal. Oh. Never seen her, never met her, didn't know her. And I said, this is great. And he said, no, please don't ever tell anybody, which I'm kind of betraying him right now. <laughs> but please don't ever tell anybody. I said, it's a great, this is an awesome story. You should revel. And he goes, no. I got the second I got there, she started doing drugs and hanging out with a really bad crew. And I know him. He's not Aww. one any part. I know. He didn't get me on a Tinder date in Nepal. <laughs> wow. That's Nepaling. I just made that up right there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, let's hear from Josh in Puyallup. What did you do on a whim, Josh? Hey, Josh. Hey, guys. When I used to live in, or when my family used to live in Florida or California, it wasn't uncommon any time during the week. We were like, hey, want to go to Disney? And we just go. We just neat. go. I think that's a great Thanks. whim. Uh, Amy and I just went on a whim of, of a hers, uh, but it was it really paid off. It was a good whim. You know what I mean? You're thinking, no, this is too whimsical. Don't do it. Don't stand in line at Disneyland. It was great fun. Mm -hmm.
But you just went to Yakima on a whim. I oh, did go right. to Yakima on a whim because it's the Palm Springs in the Middle East or whatever it is. Where is it? Is it <laughs> that's about right. Some, yeah. And you had that whim on like a Thursday and boom, on Friday you were out of here oh, and God. off to Yakima. Such is my nature. Now you know how I married several people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, did you ever do something on an impulse or a whim? Get married is yeah. one of your answers. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. two times. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some great text into 90627. Aaron on uh, Joint Base Lewis McCord says he buys uh, parts and upgrades for his truck all the time on a whim, uh, much to the displeasure of his wife. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and uh, this uh, texting, I, I bought a coffee table once, and I didn't want to pay for the delivery, so I bought an SUV. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's a good fantastic. Whim. That's a nice whim. Man. I can't fit this furniture. Let me go buy a vehicle that's bigger. I'm pretty sure that happened to you, Paul. You went to Car Pros Renting Kia to get a car for your wife, and didn't you leave there with three vehicles? Um, um That's pretty much the story. Yeah. I, I went to buy a car for me, and somehow we drove off with a car for my wife, so I had to go back a few months later and buy myself a car. That's crazy. Nice whim, man. Nice car. Rob in Louisville, good morning. Hey, Rob. Hello again, you guys. Well, one night, my wife wanted to go watch me play golf, so I took her with me, and one thing led to another, and I ended up getting lucky on the 13th hole. Wow. Nobody gets lucky on the 13th hole. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently he got a hole in one. Yeah. Did you ever do something on a whim or an impulse? <laughs> That's the question we're asking you. Call us at one eight hundred two five two one zero two five or text in nine zero six two seven. Let's hear from Karen in Bellevue. Hey, Karen. Hi. Hi. Hey. So, how are you guys? Uh, we're very well. Thanks. I, uh, I was taking a class and met a guy, um, and on the third time the class met, he asked if I wanted to go to Europe with him. And? And I did. Can I tell you that is great? Uh, Please don't break my heart. Tell me it was a wonderful experience. It was fabulous. We went for a month. You went for a month with a guy? That's so cool. I I had to find the money to go, but we had a great time. Uh, Where where is he now? Um, He's back back in Seattle, but at the time... um, he was headed off to MIT for grad school, yeah. and I was going to grad school in Seattle. And so we went to, it was summer, we went for a month. I met the man that I later married like two days before I went. Oh, wow. So wow. she still went yeah, and yeah, came yeah. back no. and married the man she's married to. I, wow. I think you're a wonderful human being. I like the way you play. Karen, that is a fantastic story. Thanks for sharing. Um, what about Brenda in Historic Kent? What, would, uh, your, what did you do on a whim or an impulse? Well, um, I uh, saw a house that I fell in love with and uh, went and saw it and bought it and got it the very next day. Holy smokes. <laughs> that, that's good. And it's funny because my uh, matching story, if you will, is not as good as yours, but I, I bought a house on the phone and it was the Philadelphia house, the one you've been to. Mm-hmm. And I thought if they described this well enough, but it wasn't a whim because I was looking for a house. But yeah, I did but buy one I'd never seen. Still, yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. That's I'll an impulse buy. Somebody's describing a house over the phone. Oh, no, in the paper. Wow. Uh, uh, the real estate game, whatever it was. Vinny in Renton, good morning. Hey, you wonderful people. What's up, Vinny? Good morning. Morning. Paul. Hey, morning. Uh, kind of back to the car story. Uh, one year my truck was running bad, and I bought a new truck on my birthday a couple of days later, and then we went to LA for the Seahawks Trader game. So we needed it because on the way back, it snowed in Oregon on the passes. So it worked out. All right. I what, missed something here. No, What part of that is the biggest whim? Is it going driving to the game? Um, no, just buying a car on my birthday, I, I guess. I he just buying went, a went car. out and bought a truck because gotcha. he felt like and it. And then drove it to a game. <laughs> I like your story, yeah. man. I like your style. Frank in Tacoma, what did you do on a whim or an impulse? Uh, I was on Tinder, met a girl, and flew to St. Petersburg, Russia over a weekend, spent 14 days. Oh, my God. Oh. Right. So a long weekend. Then my nephew is not as crazy as he appears, no, although I kind of liked it. <laughs> but no, I can see that. But I, you know, Frank appears to be a pretty normal guy and went to Russia yeah. to meet a girl. I think it's awesome. This is the way life is supposed to be, in my yeah. opinion, by the yeah. way. I, I have a friend who went to a wedding in the Philippines, met a girl on Tinder, and they had fun together for the night. And then he, I guess she hit him up again on Tinder and said, all right, I'll come visit you in New Jersey. Right. So she's going to fly from the Philippines to New Jersey. Is she or has she? Uh, I haven't done the follow-up with him. I'm trying to be tactful. Okay, because don't, <laughs> don't tell anybody to be a jerk face. Look into this girl, you know, her nature. Wait, what do you mean her nature? Like if she's up to no good? 
I, I would say that uh, 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 girls who will fly from the Philippines are a little more suspect than girls that would fly from America. Ah. Maybe it's just a bias on wedding. nationalities. Maybe. Yeah. I, I don't want to point fingers, but... Or he was real, uh, <laughs> yeah. real good hang. He was great. Yeah, I yeah. guess so. Yeah, Sounds it's right. a good hang. <laughs> He's a really... It was well. My, uh, it, it went well. It was a well hang, yeah. His yeah, hang so was well. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it went very well. Yeah, it was a magnitude. It was a very well hang. Was, yeah. Tori, let me ask you something. When you adopted your feral... Freaky one eyed cat. Was yeah. that on a whim or did you plan that? That was pretty much on a whim. But honestly, most things in life that I do are on a whim. Like Good everything. For you. Good. Just everything. Yeah, tattoos, trips, going backstage, it's all on a whim. Good for you. <laughs> But um, I do have another one, though. Okay. Yeah, so bye. on my prom night, I flew to San Francisco to see my friend's show and it was completely on a whim. It was worth oh, wow. going to the prom? Instead of going to the prom. Oh, you're crazy. I know. And and you had the wherewithal to go to another major city and go to a show at 16? I guess so. Wow. Her, her mom, all That's for pretty it. awesome. I wouldn't let any of my children out of the house at 16. <laughs> How's that working out for you? <laughs> Not that good. <laughs> Paul, have you done something on a whim or an impulse? Uh, yeah, Holiday and I went to uh, Canada for, for lunch just on a whim. Like, let's go up to Canada. And we didn't go through the like uh, regular I-5 border crossing. We went further east to... Sumas, I think it's called. So it was like a little tiny town. And they were not like friendly and understanding when they said, "You, what's your purpose for visiting Canada? And we said, lunch. And then they're <laughs> like, well, where are you headed? And we said, well, we don't really know. We figured we'd just find some place, especially because we're going into this tiny town. Yeah. Right. We're like not expecting tourists on a whim. And that, it turns out the Border Patrol just doesn't have a sense of humor. No. I, I have no proof that Canadians have a sense of humor. <laughs> it didn't help. Right right when we pulled up, this probably didn't help. Right when we pulled up, Holiday's, you know, rolling down the window to give them passports and answer their questions. And I said, now just act cool. <laughs> and I guess that got us started off on the wrong Did foot. you do it as a joke so they could hear you? Yeah. Oh, I was no. Like, no, yeah, no yes, wrong. Not just act cool. Not funny. Not funny. That Mountie went crazy. Yeah, I guess so. Jeff in Auburn, what did you do on an impulse? Um, I was going down to my cousin's wedding down in Oregon, ended up seeing a sign that said Canada Hot Springs, and me and my buddy decided, yeah, let's turn off here and let's go see what it is. Place was closed. Two girls in the parking lot were locked out of their Volkswagen bug. Ended up helping them get into their Volkswagen bug, um, exchanged phone numbers, ended up going to dinner with them later, and come to find out the young lady that I helped out was Julianne Phillips. The one that went on to marry uh, um, Springsteen. Rick Springsteen. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. Although I heard so. she was a terrible wife. I, I, <laughs> yeah, well, I've heard all kinds of things, and I'm kind of glad I stopped it. Yeah. 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 Dodge the bullet, man. And Derek, did you do something in a whim or an impulse? Stole a car. Nice. <laughs> but it wasn't that bad. It was my friend's car, and yeah. we, me and another friend were bored one day, and we had nothing to do. So we just thought, hey, let's go mess with this guy. He always leaves his car unlocked. And the ignition was already punched out anyways because he bought it that way. So we knew it would be really easy to start. So we just went and took his car and, like, moved it four blocks over and then waited outside his house and watched him come out and not see his car there and freak out. <laughs> Good time, man. Nice that time. pretty funny. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for your calls and texts. Uh, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the news. News is brought to you by Car Pros Rent in Kia. A suspect wanted in connection to a homicide case was taken into custody after a pursuit involving multiple agencies throughout South King County last night. This had started in Kent and came to an end near First Avenue South in Des Moines. An officer performed a pit maneuver to get the suspect's car to stop and thankfully no one was injured. Police have not revealed uh, many details about the homicide case and this a suspect. All right. But homicide, it's a pretty big deal. Police arrested three teenagers accused of attacking an off duty police officer at the Redondo Beach boat launch in Des Moines over the weekend. Now, we had told you about this story, but at the time, the perpetrators were in the wind. Yeah. Until now. There's a, two 18 year olds and a 16 year old that were taken into custody yesterday. This police officer was trying to get his boat out of the water asked the group to move their vehicles out of the way so he could get to his boat. And when he got his trailer and was trying to get the boat out of the water, that's when they started threatening him and punching him. Wow. It just doesn't seem like 
the right kind of crime for this neck of the woods. Yeah. I mean, people in Washington are civilized and boat owners are civil. <laughs> yeah. You got a boat, man? You're not going to go attacking folks. Right. Well, one person in the group grabbed a gun and pointed it at the police officer. They scattered after they realized somebody was recording the assault on cell phone video. And now police are reviewing the video. All three are facing assault charges. We're lucky to be alive. That's a real life comp you're playing with. Yeah, right. You know, when you point at a gun. Plastic straws, utensils, and cocktail picks will all be banned at Seattle businesses that sell food or drinks under a new law that takes effect on July 1st. Seattle is believed to be the first major U.S. city to enact such a ban. Oh, really? Because I've run into it three times already. Oh, God, I thought I was having a heart attack because I couldn't get my breath. Um, at uh, Elliot's Oyster yeah. House down yeah. the street, they bring your Diet Coke or whatever it is that you're having. No straw. But I didn't realize what was happening, so I asked, and they had it. I guess they haven't ruled them all out yet. But, that, you know, it's not a terrible idea. You know, yeah. There's all that plastic in the ocean. Yeah. I went to get a coffee, and, you know, it's so, so hot right now. And I saw, um, what the heck is the name of the place in Queen Anne that is right around the corner from Met Market? The co- oh, Ladro. Okay. Greatest coffee. And they had all these people getting iced coffee, and there were straws on the counter. I'm like, that's not like Ladro. They're all about composting and everything. And then there was a little sign that said, these are made of paper right. and yeah. not compliant. So you can get straws, just not plastic straws. I bet you will not be one bit surprised to know I have a metal straw that I could just take with me everywhere. Oh, really? I don't know where the hell I got it and why. Amy and I both have one. It must yeah. have come with a meal or a happy meal. I don't really know. <laughs> but I'd like to be the kind of guy that brings his own straw. That'd be badass. I'm sure I've used paper straws before and just never knew it or never noticed mm-hmm. it, but it seems like not logical. Yes. If I'm going to put paper into liquid, it's not going to go well. Well, well like no. when you go to a Mariners game and you get the beer and it's in a comp- it's in a cup that breaks down. Yeah, true. Made out of corn syrup. Right. It's, a, how, it's how long it will take it to break down, yeah. but it will break down unlike plastic. I know this is going to sound like a typical Sarah thing to say, but the metal straw freaks me out because how the heck do you clean that? You run water through it? That's not enough. It's not? It's no. Not. That's how you clean most things. A pretty high pressure water through it, then you turn Danny the sink up a little bit. What do you call them? Root beer floats? Yeah. You do. Putting all the milk in there. Okay, like, so worst case scenario, the next thing you drink tastes a little bit like a root beer float. That seems like a win-win Yeah, to me. it's a win-win all day long. Well, that's bad. And if it, it's not know, chicken bad. Tastes a little bit like <laughs> cocaine. I've had this straw since the 80s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Recreational marijuana use will soon be legal in Canada after their Senate passed a historic bill yesterday. The vote was 52-29 to legalize marijuana in the country, making Canada the second in the world and the first G7 nation to fully legalize marijuana. I'm shocked that it's not already legal in Canada. It seems legal. They all seem so high and sorry. (laughs) They seem very high and very sorry about it. Here we've got nine states and D.C. that allow for recreational marijuana use, 30 that allow it for medical. So a lot still not on board with this. No, you got to get on board. You're stupid and it's a lot of revenue. That's true. And as soon as you're done legalizing marijuana, you're going to be done legalizing all drugs and prostitution. And then we will pay off the debt in about five minutes. See, that's the slippery slope that people don't want to go down. Yep. Starts with the devil's cabbage, and then you go on to prostitution and (laughs) heroin and all that. I don't care what kind of salad you are eating, sister, (laughs) but uh, I will tell you that if they get on board, because what did we make last night? 400 million, not last night, last year or something, 400 million dollars in tax revenue? For Washington? Yeah. Well, if it is, that's fantastic. It is, and I think it is fantastic. Uruguay was the first country to legalize marijuana for production, sale, and consumption. That happened in 2013. <laughs> Uruguay. <laughs> I'm a guy. <laughs> oh, he's a guy. Right? General Electric will be dropped from the Dow Jones Industrial Average next week. I'm mortified about that. Ending the industrial conglomerate's more than 100-year run in the 30-company blue chip index. Yeah, it was like, no, the 1890s Yeah, when they did the Dow and they said, yeah, you want to be on it? You're GE. And it's been there ever since. Yep. And I'm not kidding. It's, they're the kind of people I, I root for. They're a titan. And now they're kicked off the thing. But they, they're replaced by, is it Walmart or Walgreens? Walgreens, yeah. They will be uh, replaced by Walgreens Boots Alliance. So... Walgreens, we know Boots is a massive company, a uh, pharmacy in the UK. So this is a bigger company than just Walgreens. Yeah. It's a the parent company. 
They said that uh, GE, Boston-based, was an original member of the Dow Jones Industrials dating back to 1896 and was the last remaining member. It had been a continuous member since 1907. The company is now under investigation related to a $15 billion hit that it took over miscalculations at an insurance unit. Oh, yeah. It's a long member. Yeah. It's not so good. A wild chase ended with a naked man running through traffic and being hit by a minivan. That's how they go. (laughs) (laughs) Somebody's got to be naked. You've been in that chase before. I've been in exactly that. Although I was clothed when I ran, but naked when I got caught. Well, then they can't prove it's you. That's what my theory was, Paul. (laughs) This started about 5 o'clock in the morning. Reports of a wrong way driver speeding down I-77 in Stark County. Stark naked. Yep. Yeah. Stark, Stark County. Stark County Sheriff's deputies arrived at the scene and found a man stark naked in Stark County. They had to deploy stop sticks to get the vehicle to stop, but then the Those naked are guy. so hard to eat with. <laughs> Those are chopsticks. Oh, no wonder I'm doing it wrong. So what did you say? This guy's displaying his stop? No, wait. What did you say? <laughs> the cops had to deploy the stop sticks. What are stop sticks? It's got to be like the spikes, yeah. right? It's like spikes, but not a long strand. Less of a beard. (laughs) (laughs) They're just single spikes they just throw out. Well, they should go on Tinder like the rest of us. (laughs) They took him to the hospital when they finally got Spike. No. They finally got the naked guy uh, out of the middle of the road, but they said, he's butt naked. And he said, I hit a deer, and that deer is inside the minivan. Uh, no. Has he just recently watched Tommy Boy? <laughs> <laughs> they believe drugs are a factor. They be. Shocking. Very sad story in the news. All right. An 82-year-old woman died in her New York home after a fire broke out, and the police could not get to her, the firefighters could not get to her, rather, because she's a hoarder. Well, her past I shouldn't come into it. <laughs> They said she had collected so much stuff and that this woman was a, a, an unbelievably intelligent woman that clearly something had gone wrong. Clearly. And um, what do they say when somebody's, uh, it doesn't take a, not a brain surgeon, it doesn't take a astrophysicist. To do what? That's like a, the expression. Oh, it's... <laughs> it's not brain surgery. It's not brain surgery. It's not brain surgery. Yeah. yeah, she was something like that or an astrophysicist or something. Crazy smart lady, but a little eccentric. And people around her said she had so much stuff, three to four feet high full of newspapers, magazines, stuff that most people would throw away. And they had to dig a tunnel through and there were so much flames they could not rescue her. Wow. <laughs> Most, uh, or not most, but some hoarders die because things fall off the top shelf of their hoard. Oh, yeah. It happens all the time. Well, the hoarding thing should not happen at all. That's just so weird. Yeah, if you did, you wouldn't have a mediocre television show. <laughs> <laughs> Police say a man who has a very distinctive tattoo on his forehead now has some pretty serious charges against him. Is there another kind? <laughs> oh, you could have a design. But if it's on your your forehead, yeah. what did you say it was? Distinctive. Yeah, it seems distinctive because he's got one on his forehead. <laughs> right. <laughs> this guy has. A... I barely even noticed that tattoo <laughs> yeah. on your forehead. It went right by me. <laughs> this guy has a gun tattooed on his forehead. That is distinctive. Uh, I trust him now. And now has charges against him for carrying the real thing. He is on probation, therefore cannot have a gun. And so he thought, okay, I'll put one on my forehead. It's distinctive on my forehead. Yeah, it is. <laughs> here it is, tattoo of a gun. But then police uh, saw him driving down the street erratically, and he tossed a loaded thirty-eight caliber out of the vehicle. They pulled him over, and the mugshot's pretty delightful. Oh, right. <laughs> There's the gun. Huge gun tattoo on Did his Did the gun match the gun on his forehead? Uh, it's a thirty-eight caliber, and I'm not so good at recognizing what those are. Oh, that'd be great. almost always going to be a revolver. So if it's one of the Glock kind of guns, yeah. it's not matching. But that's what I would for sure do. You got to get your gun totally. tattooed on your head. That's a good point. Why would I want your gun tattooed on my head? It's <laughs> crazy. He'd put my gun on his forehead. Why would he put your gun on his forehead? No, my gun. But now wait a minute. Is the picture of a gun or the words "my gun"? No, it's a gun. 
It's a gun. Picture of a gun. All right. <laughs> India has racked up the most deaths by selfie, according to researchers. And one forest ranger almost joined that statistic. During a close call, which uh, you can view this online. Oh, I will then. Park ranger Sanjoy Dutta shows off to the crowd an 18-foot python he had just rescued. That's a big snake. Yeah. So he's got it around his shoulders. Sure. He's like, Look at how big my snake is. What did he rescue it from? By the way, I've said that before. Look at how big my snake is. <laughs> it was not as impressive as you think. <laughs> Uh, the snake needed to be injured, uh, was injured, needed to be rescued. Ah. He wrapped it over his shoulders, and people were taking pictures, amazed at this 18 foot right. snake. But then the snake became agitated and started to writhe and started to strangle him. The video shows him trying to push and pull the snake's body away from his throat. And then he starts to walk away from the crowd, thinking that'll relax it. But then the snake started to wrap around his torso. Uh, people at the scene had to unwind the snake from his person, and it got away. Okay, but he's not dead. No. Oh, he no, he's, he said it was a stupid thing to do. Now, did you yeah, start this with saying death by selfie? Yeah. But he lived. No, he almost became uh, a statistic. I ah, because that's crazy with a, with a snake. Yeah. yeah. Stupid. That is stupid. And is that what most of the people are doing? Is they're taking selfies with wild animals? Sometimes, and yeah. That? They'll pull over. Because uh, I thought everybody was doing it over the cliff. That's what I thought. That's some of them. Uh, most of it is like a bear. Yeah. They're like, oh, I'm going to take a selfie with a bear. I'd do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see these dumb. bears in people's backyard, and I think, how do you not go out there and say, hey, be cool, bear. We're going to yeah. take a quick uh, photo, and then I'm going to go back inside. <laughs> and you stay close enough to the door if the bear does not pay attention to the new rules that I have set down. You run back in there. Totally how nature works. <laughs> because the bear can maybe run 35 miles an hour, whatever they say. Yeah. But it can't do it right now. No, I think it really can. If the bear's where Paul is, and yeah. I'm where I am, and I go You're to say, hey, take a picture. You're dead, yeah. And you go standing up to eat me, I run out the door. You're dead. I think you think it wrong. just stands there and watches you go? Yes. Oh, look at that backside. That's I, cute. You're supposed to make yourself look big, so how would you make yourself look big? Well, you put your arms up, right? <laughs> You can't do it if you're running away. I don't think away. he meant it that way, Danny. <laughs> I kind of did. Yeah, I knew he kind of did. Who do you think I was talking to? It was uh, Paul. It's a short joke. A terrible shortage is on the horizon. It's I terrible. didn't do it. No. <laughs> not everything that contains the word short in any way is not a Bondici problem. Come on, Sarah. Uh, this is the kind of shortage that might uh, ruin the day of somebody like Derek. All right. It's a stripper shortage? Got hit in the face. <laughs> PBR. Oh. oh. Pabst Blue oh. Ribbon. A shortage may be on the horizon. CNBC reported that the iconic brew and Miller Coors are headed to court. Pabst has filed a half a billion dollar lawsuit against Miller Coors. They are feuding over some sort of agreement that was made decades ago. And because of this lawsuit, they might not be able to. means it Go <laughs> virginia a chick-fil-a worker has become an internet sensation after somebody filmed him sprinting down the street towards the customer who had left the restaurant with her order incomplete so this is a 19 year old working at a chick-fil-a and he realized that one of his co-workers forgot to include one of the chicken sandwich and he said i knew i could probably catch up with her so i figured i might as well give it a shot uh, he then dashed out the door, ran, sprinted. Is this more fascinating because they were in a car? They were in a car. Uh, okay, I thought maybe. They got into their car. They drove away. People are comparing him to Forrest Gump, calling yeah. him a true American hero. Wow. Got her her chicken sandwich. Nice. The end. <laughs> that is a lovely That's story. A adorable story. <laughs> Gatorade is something that has been around for a really long time. Gatorade was created for the Florida Gators. It was a, a guy, I can't remember if it was a male or a female person, who uh, came up with a special formula for the athletes uh, of the Florida Gators. Ever since then, Gatorade has taken off, if anything, new flavors. It hasn't really changed much right. until now. Gatorade Zero 
is hitting stores this week. Gatorade Zero is a thirst quencher without sugar, without carbs. Oh, it's water. Well, blue water. It sounds like water. Orange, lemon, lime, glacier, cherry, and the prices are the same as regular old Gatorade. So there's no diet Gatorade all this time? There, there is like a lower calorie Gatorade, right. but not. A, it still has plenty of sugar in it. It does really. Oh, okay, because yeah. you'd think if you're a mass marketing beverage of any kind, yeah. you should have your zero calorie right behind your main product. Right. I mean, Sounds like they will. They're know. as powerful because of what Gatorade is supposed to do. It had to have sugar in it because of electrolytes. It's figuring out a way to get that stuff in there without sugar. This is the first time they've done it. So they said that the industry has changed that uh, con- consumer demand has changed and that people aren't drinking as much sugar you know when i was a kid there was a rumor all over the place that it was made with human sweat ew yeah. <laughs> really that was a standardly accepted rumor by oh. school children everywhere wow i'm pretty sure that was a false rumor well i think they're at it as i remember it and i'm i may be remembering modern day ones but it's a person sweating their guts out even dripping it and they pick up the Gatorade and put it to their lips and go, replace what you've lost. And I guess a, a kid, some kids said, oh, they mean sweat. Yeah. News this morning brought to you by Car Pros Renton Kia. When we come back, we've got music news, we've got entertainment, we've got sports, so don't go anywhere. Starting with music news, Pearl Jam was forced to postpone one of their concerts at London's O2 Arena, but for a good reason. Well, it's a bad reason, but it's a valid reason. Okay. Eddie Vedder lost his voice. No. Probably in the checkout. (laughs) (laughs) What? I don't know. (laughs) It's not what I meant to say, but it's what came out, and I was going to stand by it. But you think he dropped his voice? He misplaced his voice? He doesn't know he, where he, he lost put his it? voice. That's yeah. what she said. As, customs. That's what I meant. <laughs> Checking customs. He's on vocal custom. rest for the next few days. They're hoping not to have to postpone any more tour dates, but a lot of people fit in the O2 Arena. A lot of people were planning on attending. Yeah, the that's show. a big place, right? Yeah. People, fans who have attended concerts in the last couple of months have been saying, like, there's been things going around on the internet saying, he doesn't have it anymore that Aww. that it's permanent that he can't you know hit the notes he can't scream the way he used to scream i hope they're wrong yeah it's it's been something that, that people have uh, i think they've been doing a european tour and there's been people posting from those shows saying it was a great show just he doesn't have the voice he used to have oh is that so some people are going and enjoying it and saying he doesn't have it yeah they're saying he's just not the singer that he used to be that it that he has i mean because He's known for that scream, and you can't do that forever. No, nope, yeah, right? you can't. It's damaging. A rare set of early lyrics to Born to Run, handwritten by Bruce Springsteen, is up for auction at awesome. Sotheby's. He wrote on a one sheet of white lined paper, 1974, at his home in Long Branch, New Jersey. It is expected to go for about $300,000. And kind of worth it if you're that kind of rich person. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to do something with that money. Yeah, it's a pretty neat piece of memorabilia. And if you would like to own a piece of Daryl Hall, you could. (laughs) The Revolutionary War era estate in Amenia, New York, that was fully restored by Daryl Hall, served as the site of Live from Daryl's House. Yeah. It's on the market. Wow, I'll bet for a lot. I used to watch that show, and it's quite the house. It's beautiful. Indoor pool, uh, recording studio in the barn. It's also got several different uh, buildings, and it's on like a sprawling piece of land that overlooks the Catskills and the Berkshires. 432 acres. Wow. Um, As I said, a lot of different houses, but the house itself is just gorgeous. $16.9 $16.9 million. <laughs> Close your mouth. <laughs> wow. <laughs> to live in the Catskills. <laughs> $16.9 million. But it, it makes sense. That would buy you an okay mansion here, an okay mansion in Hollywood or Beverly Hills. There, you're getting 400 acres? That's crazy. I don't know anybody that owns 400 acres. Um, he's done okay. 
uh, Daryl Hall, uh, John Oates doing fine as well. They sold, what, 40 million records? Yeah. Uh, let me try this. Okay, Google, what is Daryl Hall's net worth? About $40 million. All right. That's Thank a you, Google. Fair amount of loot. Yeah, yeah Google's voice sounds a little different than <laughs> it used to. A musical based on Michael Jackson's life is in development. The pop icon died back in 2009 at the age of 50, and now his estate announced they are working on a theatrical production based on his life. I'd see it, for sure. Oh, you like going to the Broadway style yeah, shows. Yeah, big fan. Yeah. I mean, the great thing about it, like I would even consider going because the music's great. Yeah. yeah. It's not like it would just be a play. No, that's the kind of things you hope for when you go see a musical, that the music's great. <laughs> yeah. But what I don't like about a lot of musicals is the hokiness of it. That uh, the overtop, um, like that's why I liked Spam a lot, is because it made fun of it. Right. It made fun of a lot of. You saw Spam a lot. I loved Spam a lot. There's no keeping a, an eye on you, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you need to go to the theater more often. Like the hokiness, it would have to be a revival. That's not what they're like anymore. The songs, like Wicked, some of those songs are totally hokey. Again, very close to a revival, a story that's been told in song. But go. Go see uh, the Book of Mormon. It's hysterical, flat out funny. That I would see, but that's because it's the Book of Mormon, and it's from the guys who made South Park. Yeah. Well, but a lot of the stuff, I feel like the music is just not something that interests me. But Michael Jackson on Broadway, you're not messing with that. Right. I'd see that. I would think. Jimmy Fallon has a segment on his show. Speaking of things that are funny, um, he does a lot of impressions. He does a lot of songs. He has so many different celebrities on doing fun things with him. But he's got one segment that he does that's about music playlists. Is that right, Paul? Yeah, he calls it the do not playlist. Instead of here's what's on my do not playlist instead of here's what's on my playlist. And so he plays like the most awful songs he could find for the week. Okay. And this week uh, featured the smash hit Experience Regina. So finally, all these years later, Jimmy Fallon has discovered one of our show's favorite songs, and he talks about it on his show last night. Uh, this next one is pretty interesting. This is from the Tourist Board of Saskatchewan. I oh, love it. Okay. <laughs> love Canada. It. Yeah. Love Canada. Uh, and they hired a band called Lord X and oh. Vanilla Public to write a song to, to promote their capital city of uh, Regina. So this, is a, so this is called Experience Regina. Experience Regina. <laughs> take a listen. Take a listen to Experience Regina. You know, I thought we made this up. Oh, really? I never knew this was a real song. Oh, yeah. I thought we made it up. No, this is an actual song from the tourist board of Regina. Wow. We used of, to play this daily. Of all the, like, uh, f field trips or show trips that we've talked about taking, how did we never go to Regina? We know like, we did talk make that about it happen. when uh, your favorite hockey team, sorry, your second favorite hockey team. The Seattle Chips. Thunderbirds, yeah. The, when the, the Seattle Thunderbirds. <laughs> they, um, they were playing in the playoffs in Regina. Yes. We tried to put that together. We tried and failed. And maybe now that Jimmy Fallon's repopularizing the song, maybe we'll make it happen. Okay, I had it all wrong. I thought we wrote that song. <laughs> and I thought taking a field trip to Regina was a stupid idea. I never thought this was a great idea. And I thought that was our song. You know what? I should have thought us. Who play it? Who's got a band around here? But... Everybody's got a band yeah. around there. Yeah. yeah, I thought we did that. <laughs> well, now you could. Now that you're a guitar virtuoso, now you could. I don't know how hard that might be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've had a lot of shows get revived. Some of them more successful than others. Roseanne did wonderfully. Yeah. Until some stupid Until racist she spoke. tweets. Now, a lot of shows are getting the reboot. Uh, Will and Grace, uh, Murphy Brown, Magnum P.I. is getting a reboot. And now, so some of them are getting totally redone, and some of them are being brought back with the regular cast. And according to Fran Drescher, <laughs> she thinks the nanny is next. Well, she's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> we know. I mean, we've matured since then. Plus, you already had the horrible voice with Roseanne, but we have we have, have to have moved on that a wacky voice counts as comedy. That show wasn't great no, the first time around. it wasn't. I kind of liked it. You know her, uh, uh, they did a... What are they called when you say, I guess, a finale? I was yeah. in it. 
Oh, oh really? really? They called me up. I, I think I mentioned this. There's a character named Danny, and every time they would say, "Hey, Danny," they'd say, "Who do you mean, Danny Bonducci?" And as a funny thing, they yelled for "Hey, Danny," and I walk onto their oh, show. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, nice. shot in her house on the water in Malibu. By oh, the way, <laughs> such a great laugh. Such a great laugh. <laughs> well, her ex-husband is also the show's co-creator, Peter Mark Jacob, and they are in discussions to bring it back. So this is potentially good news for you, Danny. Oh, I think that was a one a one off as they <laughs> you say. never know. <laughs> yeah. Jada Pinkett Smith is married to Will Smith. Mm-hmm. They've got two kids together. She is forty six years old, and she and her mother went to the Vitality Institute in Los Angeles and were taking part in a round table discussion about a touchy sub uh, subject. Um, women who have given birth have said that uh, something that can happen are bladder issues. Yeah, oh, sure. Yeah. You see the commercials all the time for anybody else here and leak a little bit, those things. Yeah, you, you laugh or... Sneeze. Uh, yes. So she decided to do something about it and is speaking about it. She underwent rejuvenation. Oh, uh, what's it? Rejuvenation. Yeah. yeah. But not just for fun. She did it so she would stop winking. Yes. On accident. Not stop altogether. That'd be bad. <laughs> no, no, you want to go. She but that's said, not what I've ever heard that operation was for, though. It can be. But uh, some people, there's another procedure, there's another name for it where they make it look nicer. This is not right. that. This is a procedure that introduces heat and stimulates cellular turnover. It makes you feel younger, tighter, functions more like it was supposed to before you had children. And she said... When I tell you my yoni is like a 16-year-old's, I'm not kidding. It's like a beautiful peach. Who is this? <laughs> yeah. Jada Pinkett Smith. Why would she say any of those words? Yeah. That's, remember a few minutes ago when I was singing a song and you said all of those words are wrong? Yes. All of those words are wrong. Yes. <laughs> my that goodness. is chicken wrong. That right <laughs> there. That's chicken wrong. Uh, Samantha B. Jimmy Kimmel. John Oliver, Seth Meyer, Stephen Colbert, and the cast of Saturday Night Live are all being honored at the TV Critics Association Awards. Well, I don't think it matters. You don't think it matters? No. Why would you want to be a, that big of a group of all people that do the exact same thing for a living? Oh. You take one of them. Take, say, Jimmy Fallon. You say, hey, we're going to honor you. You go, yay. But everybody you ever met is getting the same honor <laughs> the same night, probably wearing that same outfit. Yeah. Let me finish the story. It'll make more sense. Why are you whispering? We're on the radio. Psst, go ahead. There's a new oh, <clears throat> there's a new category being introduced to the TV Critics Association Awards, and one of those people will win the new category. Oh, of, they're all just nominated. Yes, outstanding oh, achievement. Because I didn't hear it that way, and now I feel foolish. In sketch and variety shows, so they've recognized that group of people, and some others have been doing such a great job in that category. They are creating a new award. One of those will be the winner. I'd like to point out that's exactly what I told them to do, and they listened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad they can act that quickly. That fast, man, because it would have been stupid otherwise. Just Who's the winner? I'm thinking maybe SNL. They've been red hot the last year. Like, I would For agree. the first time in a long time. But John Oliver's so good. John Oliver's really so good. good. My, my money would be on one of those two. Well, Anthony Bourdain, Parts Unknown, a posthumous nomination. I mean, he was getting the nomination anyway, but it just happens to be sadly posthumous. This is for Best Informational Series. And this is of that, what award? This is the TV Critics Association Awards. And he's going up against 60 Minutes, BBC America's Blue Planet 2, The Rachel Maddow Show, PBS's The Vietnam War, and Netflix's Wild Wild Country. Wow. Does he just automatically win because he's not with us? I mean, does it give him a leg up? I would think, yeah, but I only have experience with Emmys and not winning them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I would I would say if it's the Emmys, definitely. And he's got a handful of Emmys already, I believe. Yeah. I would think um, that the Vietnam War might win. That was a really well done Yeah, time we won series. the Vietnam War. <laughs> <laughs> FX leads in nominations with 10, followed by Netflix's 9, NBC's 7. So this is a TV Critics Association Awards that will be handed out on August 4th. Hand it out. I don't know if that's the right right expression. Somebody will earn those awards. John Travolta, his movie Gotti just opened. 
and brought in a whopping $1.6 million. Yeah, I'm sorry about that because I'm a fan of both of them. This was a huge flop. This was his worst debut since the 1991 movie Shout. Uh, He is getting destroyed. The film is getting destroyed on social media saying it is just a mess. Terrible movie. Uh, Derek, what are the Rotten Tomato reviews right now for John Travolta's Gotti? Zero percent rotten. And with how many reviews? 28. Jeez. Wow, that's a bummer. (laughs) I said in order for this to be uh, considered making any money, it needed to earn $3 million. Oh, so it's that little of a movie. It did not cost a lot. It was also made a long time ago. Um, it was stuck in decades long, a decade-long production before being finished. But they actually filmed like his footage uh, 10 years ago? Some of it is older, and they said it was in production and just not getting finished. Wow. And if it only earned 1.6, it's sure as heck not going to earn another 1.4. And I, but I don't remember any big release thing. I did, I did not know this came out, and I just saw a story on it on the news, and I didn't even know this had come out. Yeah. Uh, Game of Thrones are filming is filming its final season, and the guy who plays Jon Snow, yeah. one of the biggest characters, his yeah. name is Kit Harrington, and they said, you know, this that's is a, a real name, Kit, Kit Harrington. He's British. <laughs> Kit Harrington. He said, uh, obviously, he's sad. The series is coming to an end, but I would like to step away, enjoy some obscurity, and cut my hair. Well, all of those <laughs> things are coming your way, man. Yeah. Get ready for a little obscure, obscurity, especially when you cut your hair. Uh, you know, he's the new heartthrob, and I didn't see it. A part of it's the hair. Yeah. The hair. I, I'm just not, I can usually yeah. pick a, a heartthrob out of a crowd, and I did not pick that guy. So I saw the movie, and you know, you're on horses and swords and stuff like that, I, I guess. I find the little dude uh, more hot than that. Peter yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, And you saw the movie, you mean the series. Yeah. Game what? of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to make sure our listeners weren't confused that they came out with a movie. Oh, why would I say? The movie. The movie, yeah. Oh, oh, I guess I'm stuck on the John Travolta thing. But you're right that the little guy was, he was for sure, when he was alive, he was the heartthrob. Yeah. Will you stop killing off Angela Although it's Lansbury? easier to suck out the poison <laughs> out of a guy that size. That's true. And you don't winky on the jellyfish sting. <laughs> and well, bust your ass. It's worth a shot. Yeah. Good tips. I love Fridays. Let's take a look at sports. <laughs> Good Good tips. tips. Sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys. If you're facing a DUI, call 1-800-DUIOA. That's 1-800-DUIOA. The Seattle Seahawks wide receiver Doug Baldwin has been named a finalist for ESPN's Muhammad Ali Sports Humanitarian Award. Wow. Kevin Durant of the Golden State Warriors, John Cena of the WWE, and J.J. Watt of the Houston Texans are his rivals, so to speak. So he uh, has shown a lot of leadership and that's one of the biggest components to winning this award and the mariners lost to the new york yankees seven to two yesterday mm-hmm. four home runs for the yankees they'll turn it around today first pitch 405 root sports with felix hernandez on the mound versus jonathan luasiaga yeah that guy turn it around uh, earlier in the show, we talked about a relief pitcher for the San Francisco Giants. He got so mad he blew a save that he punched a door and broke his hand. Wow. Well, now the Chicago Cubs are down a man for taking his pants down. Their closer, Brandon Morrow, he was taking his pants off, started getting back spasms, and couldn't even finish taking his pants off. He said the back spasms were so bad and he can't pitch. So where was he? <laughs> he was at his home. Oh. He said it was 3 o'clock it's in the morning. totally sounded like because he couldn't go on that he had taken his pants off in front of a crowd of 50,000 screaming yeah. fans. I did see that happen once. Uh, I bet you did. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is his name? Uh, Steve somebody or other. He's a broadcaster now. And he forgot it was a game and not practice. He slid into second base and his shirt came untucked. So he undid his pants and started to shake him out and tuck his pants back in. I remember that. <laughs> wow. Oh, I can't remember his name. They call him uh, Psycho. And of course they do. He totally forgot that it was a live game and he pulled his pants down on TV. Whoops, that'll happen. Were there people Morrow. there? It was a full-fledged yeah, it baseball was a game. game yeah. How do you forget it's a game when there's 50,000 people there? Brandon Mora played a couple of seasons for the Mariners, and he yeah. never had a problem uh, taking his pants off. I mean, <laughs> no. he, none, yeah. that, none, that were, none that were reported anyway. <laughs> The Storm lost to the Las Vegas Aces 89-77. They play the Indiana Fever next on Friday. 
And in World Cup action, Japan beat Colombia 2-1. to one. Senegal beat Poland 2-1 to one yesterday. Russia beat Egypt 3-1. to one. Portugal versus Morocco happened earlier this morning. Derek, what did happen? Right. Oh, earlier that game ended 1-0. to zero. Portugal beat Morocco. And Uruguay versus Saudi Arabia. What's happening there? They are currently in the 63rd minute, and Uruguay is winning 1-0. to zero. I'd like to point out that all drugs are legal in Uruguay, and they're winning. <laughs> yeah. I want to say that if you, got, if, you know, the cops or the president or whoever is listening right now. Yeah, and all drugs are not legal here, and we didn't even qualify. Right. See? You see? Yeah. <laughs> And don't forget hookers, because that you can tax right. that too. Iran versus Spain happens at eleven o'clock this morning. Uh, speaking of people uh, partying, it wasn't drugs; it was beer. Swedish fans were so excited about a win over South Korea; they have been partying to the point that in the town where the match was played, a place in Russia called Nizhny Novgorod. Oh yeah, they drank the town dry. <laughs> There's no more booze. There's wow. no booze in Nuzhna, no no, no, no. That place. Ville? Yeah. Yep. That seems crazy. To well, me. you think it's nowhereville, but it is Russia. They had tons they had, of booze. They had so much vodka. They had to. Yeah. Yep. And Sweden was so excited, they drank the town out. They are saying right now, Moscow is dangerously close to running out of beer. Jeez. Don't don't let booze uh, go away in Moscow. They'll go Ooh. crazy. <laughs> Riot in the streets. Uh, that was your sports, and it was brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys at 1-800-DUIOA. Another jam-packed show coming your way tomorrow at 7.50. I will hand deliver a filthy forecast at 7.20. Tickets to see the Foo Fighters September 1st at Safeco Field. And about 6.40, we've got Mariners tickets yeah, to give away. You want to be involved in that. You know, uh, if you come here to the radio station, sometimes uh, Steve Slayton likes to forget this radio show going on with cameras, likes to take his pants down and play some classic <laughs> rock. Yeah. I don't know why he does it, but I'll tell you, I appreciate it. Anyway, Steve Slayton is going to come in this room and he's going to play some classic rock and roll for you because that's what he does. We should get out of his way. Bye.